ready? Uh, the dog show with Nick and Joe. It's a beast. It's going down. It's off the chain. It's off the leash. I'm tuning in Friday every week. The dog show podcast. Yes, indeed. Hold up. Check out the podcast. Listen to it online. Giving you advice to help train your canine. Take your dog to the next level from the experts of obedience. The dog show, dog show. Guaranteed you're needing this. Hey, off the leash. K9 training, Facebook and IG. And the site is so amazing. Yeah, the dog show with Nick and Joe. Hold up. The dog show with Nick and Joe. Hey. All right. Welcome to the dog show. Episode 14. Um, let's get in some sponsors. We want to thank DemonABitesuits.com. That is DemonABitesuits.com. Owner Chris Pell, super, super cool guy. Um, you could get what we consider to be the finest bite suits on the planet um, from his website and use discount code DOGSHOW for 10% off your, uh, your order. And then uh, we want to also thank uh, Flower of Life CBD. That's F-O-L-C-B-D.com. Huge advocates for CBD as always for your pets and uh, for us as humans. So research it, go back and listen to episode six with Desiree Joyce. If you haven't already, you'll learn everything you need to know about that. And uh, you can also use discount code dog show for 10% off as well. Um, and then finally, we want to thank Whistle GPS Collars for sponsoring tonight's show as well. Um, literally little trackers like quarter size that you can just put on your dog's flat collar and you can uh, get on your phone and track them uh, through live GPS uh, if they ever get lost so uh, use discount code dog show for them and you will get I believe $15 off each unit um, which is a super super good discount so we highly recommend them want to thank uh, Sean for being in the studio tonight filling in for Nick while he's out in Cali we got Mark Torrance here we got Mark Pellin here and my boy Kylo let's Kylo get it into house. it power up request received initiating systems powering of transmitters Live from OLK9 Studios in Virginia, they tell it like they see it. They educated the not-so-educated, and you'll laugh your ass off. Introducing The Dog Show with Nick and Joe, a podcast with knowledgeable info, rants, and absolute randomness. You're listening to the sounds of uncensored honesty from two of the most respected dog trainers in the industry. Live on Facebook every Friday at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. New episodes available for download every Saturday. The Dog Show with Nick and Joe. Download on iTunes, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. Man, this dog is shedding so bad. <laughs> Holy crap. So, um, really excited about uh, tonight's episode. We have a couple of very, very well-respected... Uh, IP, you want to get down, Bubba? A couple of very well-respected... <laughs> IPO helpers. We have Mark Torrance over here in the corner, and then Mark. Pronounce your last name correctly. Pay for on. Me. Pay yeah. on. Pay the, on. The way you remember that is you got to pay to own it. Oh, That's there it is. There it already I'm started. Joking. Here we I'm go. Joking. It's going to be a fun <laughs> night. Pay on. <laughs> pay on. And then uh, we have uh, Mr. Sean Jacobs, the uh, show producer and head trainer of Off Leash Canine Training, Fredericksburg, sitting across from me. Nick is out in California right now. He is. Uh, training Cody Garbrandt, uh, which is a uh, UFC champion, um, his dog, that guy, I love Cody Garbrandt, man, and Nick's had nothing but great things to say about him, he's texting me a few times saying how awesome he was, and um, cool. you know, how down to earth he was, and and uh, I believe he is dropping that uh, official before after video, if not tonight, tomorrow, <clears throat> um, which is crazy, it's day three, but that's what he does. So uh, excited to see that, excited to have him back next week. Next week we have um, the godfather of PSA, uh, Jerry Bradshaw from Tar Hill K9 coming in. So we're excited about that. As you guys can see, we have a little mascot in the studio with us tonight. This is my dog, Kylo, actually my daughter Hannah's dog, Kylo. Uh, she is the primary caretaker of him. He's by my feet right now. 
and um, he's just going to hang out with us. So uh, if he poops, we may uh, we may have to stop for a second and clean it up so we don't Solid, stink ourselves yeah. out the studio. But you know, it is what it is. So um, guys, why don't you introduce yourselves and tell everyone a little bit about you? You know, it's age before beauty, so. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Waiting on you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mark T, go ahead. Uh, you know, man, I've been um, born and raised Washington, D.C., DMV area. You know, I love it. I've been having dogs my whole life, man. I don't want to get into the whole background of the life, but I've been doing dogs my whole life, man. I got in the shits in about 14 years ago, man, and never looked back. Yeah? You know, you know never looked back. Very cool. So. Very cool. And Mark P., tell us a little bit about yourself, buddy. Uh, I got into Schutzen about uh, four years after that timeline, so about 10 years ago. Actually, it was a, a military police canine unit guy out in Hawaii who got me kind of hooked on the whole bite sport concept. I saw him working a dog. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Put me in a suit. I want to run. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so he bit me, and I was like instantly, yes, this is the thing for me, obviously. Another buddy of mine was training with the uh, Aloha Schutzen Club, which was on the base that I was stationed at in K-Bay. Nice. So I went out there, checked it out. Uh, immediately, I was like, yep, I got to do this helper work stuff. A series of events happened. I was trying to get certified as a, as a decoy to, to do trials. Got hurt. And then I got orders to go out to Virginia Beach, uh, not far from here, where I met my... Uh, Longtime mentors, uh, Fred and, and Carla, who are from the Netherlands, and they just put me through the serious helper boot camp. They tried to run me out the field, and I, res- <laughs> you know, I, I refused to leave. So they put a great foundation in me. I was working like 40 dogs in a day, 35 dogs, uh, which accelerated that process. Uh, and from there, it's just been a long, long ride uh, of working hard. You know, meeting great people across the country doing helper work. Uh, this guy was way too humble in his little intro here because i'm like i didn't say uh, enough <laughs> this guy, let's start it over yeah, this guy <laughs> jesus he's, christ he's way, too <laughs> humble on this, man. way too humble on it but no but i've been very fortunate and uh, cool, man. because of guys like this you know i've yeah. got to do some events uh, at the national level now and I'm, I'm still working my way up the ladder unlike this guy yeah yeah who's been to the top of the mountain so very cool mark t we're gonna roll back around Seriously, here brother cool. yeah, you know I, you know my father's <laughs> name's ed Another name for <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Sean, what's going on with you, man? Anything new? Uh, not much, man. Just uh, the podcast is a big deal, and uh, this is going really well. We're pretty busy with this, and uh, lots of dogs right now. Pretty busy, so good All stuff. Right. Very cool. Let's get into some news. You guys <laughs> cool with that? Yeah, sure. All right, a couple of stories I want to talk about. Um, this one kind of caught me off guard. I didn't even know anything was going on with this company. PetSmart faces another dog death. Apparently, this is becoming a trend uh, with the company um i'm not going to go all into the details but essentially somebody dropped their dog off uh to get groomed and picked up went to go pick up their dog and it would it was dead so um wow. charges are being filed on the groomer and what's crazy is that this comes sick or the day after six or, or excuse me the day after that police raided literally raided a pet smart i believe in nashville, nashville yeah. where there were six other dogs that were uh, uh I, I don't know if they died or if they were abused or um i'll have to uh update you guys on that but yeah it's crazy man it's like pet smart that's probably the biggest pet you know supply company in the in the country right that's crazy and so yeah i mean um what kind of dog was it you know um let me see if it says here was it another like uh like cause of death by hanging from the grooming table kind of situation you know they didn't get in at least in this story that i'm looking at right now they didn't really get into the details which is why i don't have a whole lot for you but uh it was in new jersey that's still crazy it is crazy, and, and I guess in New Jersey, you don't have to actually have a groomer's license to practice grooming, and um, so that's a big stink right now. So I would imagine that that law is going to change in the yeah. very, very near future. So I'm really curious to know what that you know, cause of death would have been or, or what they think it could well, be. Well, from the groomer. From that, well, that they was dropped off, but we don't know, like, did it ingest something or... Um, yeah, I, I mean it's happened before though, right? Where yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's apparently it's table? happened quite often here in the last year or so. Um, they're on the radar now. Yeah, yeah they are that. on the radar. <laughs> so, 
uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that. So um, let's uh, let's move on. So you guys know that I've been uh, kind of obsessed with this United Airlines uh, shit that's going on. For, sure. um, for those that don't know that are listening, uh, essentially they've been in a lot of issues here lately. They uh, killed a dog by putting it in the overhead bin. It was a Frenchie too, right? Mm-hmm. Shit, man. Could have been Kylo. Although there's a zero percent chance <laughs> I would have let them put Kylo in an overhead yeah, bin, I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but then um, you know they were sending dogs to the wrong on the wrong planes to the wrong cities, wrong countries. So they actually suspended their uh, their pet program. Yep. They don't allow uh, anything but service animals on on. In cart, or in the well, cabin. they're not even flying dogs in cargo anymore. Wow. So, uh, federal law can't prohibit them from uh, allowing service dogs right. on. So, um, that sucks. that's the only way that you are getting a dog on United for right now. But anyhow, um, here's why. Here's why the numbers are so high. And Nick actually touched on this mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. He said that he would have to assume it's because... Uh, they carry more dogs than any other airlines is the reason why, you know, all we hear is United, United, United right. when it comes to, you know, dog injuries and deaths. Um, and it turns out he was correct. So okay. last year there were a total of 506,994 animals flown on uh, all airlines and a total of, I don't want to screw this up. 138,000 wow. that flew on United. United had a total of 18 deaths, 13 injuries. Um, to put that into comparison, Dang. so United, 138,000 animals flew with them. Um, American Airlines, huge fucking company, right. only 34,000. Delta, huge <clears throat> company, only 57,000. So... I mean, United. I don't. Are they are they that much cheaper than the rest? Or I mean, I mean what's, what's the deal? Uh, what's the ticket cost? There. What's the ticket cost for the cargo? I have no clue. I mean, take one hundred thirty-eight thousand times whatever that is. I mean, that's what they're losing typi- this year. By typical now. breeder, like shipping a dog from one state to another on a flight. Mm-hmm. You know, you're looking at like a four hundred dollar charge. You know, if you bought a puppy, yeah, that's four hundred bucks. Right. I assume that it's going to be either just under that or about that price. About that, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's insane, though, that's... man. Anyhow, they've suspended uh, their their uh, pet program indefinitely. Um, as always, I'm going to keep a close eye on that and try to figure out uh, what's going to happen next. So next story, final one, is uh, this is kind of a cool one. Uh, so a dog goes – where is this at? I just want to make sure I get this right. Uh, I don't know. I screwed that one up. But anyhow, so a <laughs> chihuahua and a uh, – looks like a, a retriever mix um, went off missing. It just brother and sister, right, same home. They they kind of took off out back and didn't come back for a while. And the chihuahua eventually came back that day. The retriever mix did not. Mm. So the owners uh, immediately assumed that the uh, the the dog got hit by a car or something. But then they started getting sightings of the dog. Uh, you know, people were calling up saying, "Hey, we see a retriever." Blah 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 blah. And uh, but they never could get their eyes on them. Animal control never got their eyes on them. Ten months go by. Come they home. Came home. What? Dog came home. Come Ten. Home. 10 months. That's the best party in Vegas I've ever heard of. Here's here's the really really cool part about that <laughs> is gone. is that the owner said that the uh the dog looked absolutely no different than it did <laughs> the day it left. No no older, no, you know, the uh, chihuahua. No, 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 no. This was the retriever mix. Yeah, the chihuahua came back the same day. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. He was like, he wasn't about that life. I need my Taco Bell at home. Faking. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyhow, kind of a cool story since the other two were kind of shitty. So, uh, we'll end on those. Um, All right, let's get into this week is IPO week. We uh, we brought what we consider two of the best in the game right now in studio to tell us everything about ipo because sean and i know shit about ipo we know the fundamentals um but we want to learn and uh and 
you know, I, I, Mark P reached out to me when we started the show and uh, we chatted on the phone for a while and we instantly vibed and I was like, yeah, man, let's get you on. And then uh, he introduced me to Mark T. And uh, for those who watched last week's show, at the end, when uh, Sam was talking about uh, one of his buddies as one of the best IPO helpers in the game, and I was an idiot for not having him on the show, (laughs) go figure, here he is. Here he is. So it's it's a small world. So if you guys have IPO questions, uh, on, if you're watching live on Facebook right now, go ahead and shoot them in. Um, we will get to them. I have it up on the laptop right now. So, um, first off, let's get into the number one question. What is the difference between, at least my number one question? Everybody's. What is the difference between IPO and Schutzen? There's no difference. <laughs> Nothing. Zero. You said zero. Oh, there's no difference. Nothing. Okay, name then change. why? W- explain the name change. Why? Um, good. <laughs> we were Schutzen. And I guess you have different shits and organizations. You have your DVG, you have USCA, Schutzen, USCA GSDCA. Yeah. And what happened was a lot of the organizations was under different rules. So if I wanted to go do a USCA trial or, and I'm GSDCA, my dog had to do a different, you know, mm-hmm. maybe different subtle, standard of rules. You know what I mean? Just, just rules, yeah. subtle things. So now IPO is what international protection organization. We're all under one organization. So at least now we all have the same rules. We can go to another organization they have to honor what we do we honor what they you know it's all the same it's no mixture kind of connects internationally what that rule base is i think it's international proofing or nung or something i can't, i don't speak i've been German, trying to think so. yeah. i say schutzen yeah. there you go <laughs> <laughs> you know. so is is schutzen obsolete now it's, it's still here i mean I, but i mean it, the like, name yeah the name no. Not to the people who do it. I think no. everybody who does it is probably sick of the name changes because it really does, doesn't affect us in, in any way except now it just – got to explain why the hell it's called something else. Yeah. In fact, next year we were talking about it earlier. They're changing the name again to if, IPG. If, if you look at all the clubs, it's Schutzen's in the name. It's still yeah. Schutzen. Yeah. yeah. Greater Washington, D.C. Schutzen, Schutzen group, Club. You know what I'm saying? Or group, yeah. or working dog. Or, you, know, yeah. uh, you know, it's Schutzen. I don't see IPO – you know, of, of, of water or for and, Kentucky. Or. And Schutzen originated in Germany, That's right. I believe. Yeah. So it was like a, a, essentially, originally, it was a breed suitability test, right? Yeah. They wanted to put the dogs through a series of events of tracking obedience protection to see which dogs were most suitable for breeding. breeding. Today, it's mainly for sport. Of course, people still use it, I think, as a kind of measuring rod in mm-hmm. some ways. Uh, but it's definitely taken a, a different you know culture now it's not so much like if the top dog you know best number one dog in the world that doesn't mean it's necessarily the best for breeding purposes obviously it shows that it's capable of work though right so let's get into it man explain to the viewers out there who've literally never heard of either and the listeners who are downloading the podcast which we really really appreciate you guys uh downloading the podcast if you wouldn't mind that helps us out big time so even if you watch it just download it leave it on your phone you can delete it the next day we don't even care (laughs) but uh we do have it fine-tuned for audio so it's definitely worth a listen so for the viewers out there and the listeners who have zero clue what what schutzen or what is it what is it explain it I look at it like football. I know earlier I said Olympics, that's the big show. Mm-hmm. You know, you have all these different teams, different clubs. And it's, in my opinion, it's the number one bite sport with bite work in it because of the discipline of it. So you have to do bite work, you have to do tracking, you have to do obedience. So it's a discipline of a dog, a well-rounded dog, who can do three different phases. And I guess if you get 300, you know, 100, 100, 100, which I haven't seen yet, you know, it's the ultimate goal perfection it's perfect and you can't really perfect it that's why i call it the ultimate yeah you know it's the ultimate it's like golf you know it's 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 like golf to me you know i'll never forget the show you guys did i love uh the show you guys did with cody and and desiree yeah yeah Uh, i think it was cody that was talking about like he looks at this as like the karate of dog sports Mm -hmm. and then he looked at like uh ring sport is like the jujitsu and i i relate to that because i'm a martial arts guy okay and i do jujitsu and all these other principles but like for me uh schutzen or ipo or whatever it is that you want to call it at this point it's all about that pursuit of perfection and that's what makes it super hard because you you will never attain that but the fun thing is it's different levels yeah right you know just like a, a helper you have a club level you have regional level you have national level 
So if you say, okay, I just want to do this on the weekends, this is a hobby for me. Right. I'm not really tripping on competing club level. Trying you know, to get you go some, there for the camaraderie, trophies. trying to get yeah. away from home, yada, yada, yada. Achieve some know. things. That's right. common man, yeah. Then like when you it. say, okay, I got a dog, man. Let me let me hit a regional. You do go to the regional. You got to score. Hey, you know, maybe I can compete at the highest level. The judging gets harder, too. Like, like what used to be, like, let's call it a <clears> 290, <throat> right, a great score at a club level, that same exact performance at a regional, that's dropping a lot. Yeah. You're losing a lot more points. At a national, you're losing even more points. You know, it's based to keep people in the club. Right. It's, you know, keep people who are just weakened warriors. Right. For. Which are great. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um. So explain what a helper does. What 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 is a helper? Yeah, man. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, I look at it two ways. Um, I look at, and for me, I try to break this conceptually down as a helper and as a decoy. Uh, I know that the title is helper and that's what people call it. But to me, it's two separate things. A helper to me is the guy that's building the dogs. It's creating the the power machine in training. And that guy is the most valuable asset period in the sport. More more important than the the top uh, trial helper out there, which I am, you know, purposely going after myself. But like the guy who can and gal, there's plenty of awesome women out there doing it, too. Uh, the people who like build these dogs from puppy or even older dogs and get them so that their their grips are right, you know they're in the right state of drive, uh, you know they're they're working with the handler. That's a helper to me personally. A decoy to me is working for a judge, and they're testing the dog in trial, uh, so that the dog can discern which dog is truly the top dog in a trial. Hmm. Uh, and that person is also extremely skilled. It's a different art form hmm. in and of itself mm -hmm. because they don't, they're not there for the dog no more. They're there for the judge's ability to see a consistent picture, which is damn near impossible in truth. Uh, human error is going to come into play, but we got to try to be exactly the same picture every dog so the judge can discern which dog brings it, which dog doesn't. And we're not caring about the dog at that point. So for me, the, that's kind of like the, the difference. Yeah. And, and there's there's uh there's different levels to IPO, right? I mean, different yeah. titles. You have Title One, Title Two. What does it go up to three? I right. believe. So, just I, I know you can't give me an exact, you know, point it at the exact length of time, but on average, how long would it take if you started training a, a German Shepherd puppy at eight weeks old? How long would it take before you could bring this dog to trials to go for IPO one? Well, technically, well. You have to pass a BH first. Yeah, there's a there's a breed uh, temperament test. Oh, okay. Before you're even allowed to go into the actual one, two, and three types. Is there an age limit for that? Or? 15. 15 months. Okay. 15 months. So you're you're not even doing anything until the dog's 15 months. 15. That's right. Well, you got dogs, you know, like we train in my club, you know, we'll title a dog. We'll train the dog to a Schutzen three. So that way we can go BH, boom, boom, boom. one, two, three uh -huh. in a row. But you can't do anything to 15 months, and you got 18 months. Is the one is the IPO one? You know? That's the wow. minimum age, yeah. eighteen hmm. months old for the lowest title. That actually surprises me. I that it's a maturity crazy. factor. Yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. And a physical aspect too. Like you know, the, they're they're thinking of the the health of the dog, right? There's jumping over a, 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 a jump, the A frame. You got to do that in the obedience routine. Uh, there's a lot of impact, obviously, in the protection work side. Also, breaking a young dog Bre in protection. Yeah. You got to build know. them up slowly, so you don't. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Sean, you have any questions for us? Keep sliding into some more. I, I got a million of them, but if you have any, go for it. Well, buddy. they kind of touched on it already. I'll just for listeners, for me, for anyone that has no idea about it, say today, I, you guys got me excited. I want to go start That's to right. do this. Where do I go? Who do I talk to? Yeah. Like just. And then, obviously, there's a decision of where you want to go, right? Who of course, which with. is a big deal. Yeah. Now it's different because I was, I was in the same position, mm -hmm. and I just Googled. Okay. I want to do bike work. I didn't even want to do shits, and I didn't even want to be a helper. You know, and, and it, I, I, unfortunately, I Googled. I found a local club. You know, I met a guy named Matt Ford. He's, you know, Ron Marshall, my mentors, Bush Henderson. So it's, it's, I Googled. Mm -hmm. I found. I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I had no aspirations of doing helper work. Yeah. You know, and he was like, oh, okay, you know, you're pretty athletic. 
and you put the sleeve on. And you were telling me before the show started, you've done some some pretty epic shit in the IPO world, right? Tell us. I've, tell, I've, tell, tell, and I said front line last week like an idiot. Front <laughs> half. I heard that too. I said he said front line. Yeah, I man. feel like I was in the military. Yeah. I had to get a little tick. Uh, tick. <laughs> Mark Mark B hit me up and he was like, "Oh, by the way, that's not actually my brother. It's my brother in sport, and it's not it's front bro. line. It's front half." And I'm like, "Oh, I fucked that one up, didn't I?" Anyhow, what what did you do, man? Tell us. And look, funny thing, Sam Sam called me and said, "I know what's going on, man. You coming on that show, and they got you messed up." <laughs> <laughs> so um. Well, I mean, I've, I've, like I said, I didn't come into the sport to be a top level helper. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to be a dog trainer. Sure. That wasn't in the cards for me at the time. You know, like I said, I met the right people. Like I said, I met Matt Ford, Ron Marshall. They put a sleeve on me, and I, you know, first you have to go club level. That's dog sleep. The dog snoring. Yeah, yeah. He snored right here. Yeah. It's a, it's a Frenchie guy. So you're gonna hear I, I, I don't snoring worry. I'm, I'm like, turn it up. I'm used to snoring. Right here. But um, you know, I, I had no aspirations until I really started getting into it. Like you said, uh, different titles. You have IPO one, two, and three for the dogs. You have the same for a helper. You have club level, regional level, and national level. The goal is national level. Right. If you want to be a decoy, that's what I wanted to be. I had I said if I want to train a dog or be a decoy, I want to be a world level decoy. Mm -hmm. You know, and I put the time in, and you know, it's just the rest was history. How long have you been doing it? I've been doing Schutzen for probably about fourteen years. Now, what made you, um, what made both of you guys actually pick Schutzen? Why not, you know, uh, French Ring or? I tried that. Okay, I'm telling you, not lying. And we bringing Sam up again, but Sam put a suit on me, and 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 by the way, real quick, him and. Uh, Sam Edmonds from from K Nine Guardians, they're like best fucking friends. Who would have thought? Oh, Anyhow, go he, ahead. Sorry, he put a suit on me. That son gun bit me from the back. Nice. So why would I ever? <laughs> <laughs> why? That's funny. You know, if you saw Sam seven eight years ago, man, it looked oh, like somebody man. hit him with a shotgun <laughs> up and down his arm. And, hey, and, and, I wasn't and, I wasn't gonna say anything, man. But did you see his arm? No, hey, but Sam sent me. Shit's gruesome. Sam sent me a video of you. That's the fucking. <laughs> 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 I wasn't even going to bring it up until Sam. you did. <laughs> that blue jacket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably had a hole in the back. <laughs> I love it. I love the bite work. To me, the glory is just because of the discipline. Yeah. I can train a dog to bite all day long. I can train a dog to protect. But to get the sure. obedience and the a, a tracking and, and, and to be a top-level helper at the height of the game, you know. But I respect what, what people do in PSA and – APPDA or, and things like that. I, I really love it. I mean, each sport has its own place in the world. So you went to the World Championships in 2013, 2013 which you were explaining to me what that was, um, which is pretty much the Olympics of IPO should say. It is the Olympics. I mean, you're dealing with, like I said, you every country against each other. And how many how many American helpers have ever appeared in the World Championships? Six. Six. I believe, and I may be off, but I believe it's six. Yeah, six. I think you're right. So we have one of six Shout in the studio. Shout out to Jeff Batiste. He did it in 12, yeah, 13. Man. Jeff Batiste, he, he did the back. the back half. Awesome. And we all had to go through a series of trials and cuts. Yeah. We started with, let's say, 14 helpers. That the judge from Germany came down. The head judge, uh, Gunther Deagle, came down from Germany. And it started with cuts, and he started cutting. We had to meet in Tennessee. We had to go back to Tennessee. Had to go whatever Kentucky. Had to come back here in, in Jersey. We had to keep meeting all the while and making cuts to see who's staying consistent, who's the best. Do you recall how many helpers started started off? Fourteen, I believe. Oh wow, fourteen. And and, and one. that was that was just to be like that's pre weeded out already. Like they kinda, the fourteen was chosen yeah, out of everybody. like the country, right? Right. Like you're looking yeah. at a whole group of. Who knows how many? At the but. time, I had no nationals under my belt. If he said, let me see where we have a helper book, which is a record, your, re your right. report card, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, because the judges in every trial you do can critique you. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be poor. He can he can cross you off the book. Yeah, yeah. I had no dogs in my book. Wow. And I, and I wasn't supposed to be there at the trial. And a, a few people, I won't mention no names, tried to stop me from going. <laughs> uh -oh. But, but um, he has no dogs in the oh, book. Yeah. And a good friend of mine, Steve Howe, said... Uh, yeah. His words exactly. If there's a better help in the world, better than Mark Torrance, you know, I'll tattoo the name on my ass. That's his words, not mine. Wow. I, would, I, I really would have liked to have seen it. I know. You not personally. Lost on purpose. <laughs> you know, but, you know, and, sometimes you can't trust paper, is what I'm saying. It's and like where, a pedigree. where was the world championships at? It's in, uh, Philly? Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. Philly. Right. And, and by the way, he's not going to say it, but like getting to that point, right? The entire world came to Philly, let's say. All these countries came together with their best dogs. And two Americans were representing our whole country, you know. 
and he's been, you know one of two in that case and they went out there and like the whole world is saying what's USA got as far as helpers and these guys went out there I've watched the damn video of <laughs> him on almost Tryouts. every dog I can find every trial just because you know that's an aspirin represented our whole country and it's super amazing the how well they did first of all i mean dog after dog you're talking about 140 okay. something dogs yeah. well that's so yeah it was, yeah it was a little over 100 on that one but it was yeah it's a lot of dogs for a three-day course <laughs> and, and then you're going back to back to back <laughs> doing 10 15 dog flights yeah wow yeah it's a lot of work lot and of work. and this isn't i mean this isn't your full-time job so I, but I, even though it probably seems yeah. like it right yeah, i do it at work you know i have lunch break i'm training the dog yeah. i'm working out you know you know I, i'm not doing too much helper work these days and you know fortunately we have a good strong yeah young group of people <laughs> yeah that's coming along that you know you a lot of people thought it'd be hard for me to pass it along but right. when you have people like mark Pallon and, and roy kennedy and marcus hampton and and and, you know Miko and and, yeah, I mean, we, and Rod, Rod Davis. Yeah, Miko's local to us. Yeah, man. Yeah. And so Miko, he was uh, just with us early. I mean, Miko, if he was with us early, we had at the seminar. three of the best national level helpers. We had Rod, Miko, and and, and Mark Pallon. Pay y'all. Yeah. Pay me go. more. <laughs> all, <laughs> all in one little area. You yeah. Know, little old me, world champion. Like, I can do this. I can sit here and yeah, step that's away, cool, man. That is so because fucking cool. Because it's in cool. position. Yeah. You know. And what are you guys doing this weekend? What's going on? Yeah, so we um, we have a helper seminar and classification. Depends on the ability levels of the people that are showing up. Today we had four people. A lot of people can't get off on Fridays, but tomorrow we, we're probably going to have a crap ton of people coming out, a lot of dogs coming out. And the whole purpose of it is to bring the community together to help these helpers who then go back to their clubs to help the dogs, right? So we're training them on every single detail from the beginning of the routine mm -hmm. of the hold and bark the escape, the, uh, the driving, all the intricacy of that. Uh, yeah, we're, we're basically like breaking it down. Foundation. Style, yeah. Fundamentals foundation. That's awesome, man. One thing, because I've been, I've been doing a lot of, I've just got into the, uh, the sport dog scene um, not too long ago, uh, probably about six months ago, where I'm just, I'm, I'm noob, right? I'm learning as much as I possibly can. So I'm studying all the sports, watching the, uh, you know the youtube videos and everything one thing that i've learned is that ipo shitson is top tier when it comes to obedience i mean it True, obedience yeah. is fucking control. heavy yeah i mean it, it is you know it's it's it it's a big part in it right yeah definitely yeah you can win it or lose it right there in obedience. for sure but it's in every aspect almost i mean <clears throat> In the tracking, the dog seemingly is working on yeah, its, its own. Yeah, but it's, it's so many phases within exactly. obedience. Yes. You have three phases, but then within yep. all the phases, there's so many phases, but obedience, I mean, yep. so you have the long down, the healing, the dumbbells, the retrieves. retrieves yeah. uh, so walk me through a Title I, uh, uh, what what somebody, a handler and their dog would have to go through. Okay, well, that's this, easy. The step process. I just did a Title I in December with my okay. dog, trying to step into the competitor world, and it's pretty much, it's the easiest title, but it's also the hardest title because your dog's not trained to a system three. He's still like that that adolescent, that teenager. You know, he's he's not. You don't really want him to peak right here at IP one. I don't want my dog to look like a system three dog at IP one. Even though we try to train him to system three, yeah. but it's I want to chip away at him. Yeah, and that's why there's an age limit to it. You know, so he's it's kind of uh, the routine smaller. It says in protection, since I, we love protection so much. I run two blinds mm -hmm. in IPO one. I run five and I run six and I do a bark and hold. Okay. IPO two, you run four blinds. IPO three, you run six blinds. So the discipline is different. Yeah. You know, you get more bites in IPO three. You know? Okay. You get more stick hits in IPO three. You get, you know, shoot some one, you may get you know a re attack and two stick hits. That's it. And that's yeah, that's the extent you know, of the six. That's the extent. Of, you know. And then on a one, you're gonna do uh, for the tracking phase, you'll do three hundred paces. That's right. Three hundred pace track well, that, talk you, about that you lay. All right with articles that they got to indicate throughout. Right. Uh, and then in the obedience, you know, uh, basically in the obedience, you're going to do a healing routine uh, all off leash. Uh, actually, no, you, you start on leash? In the IPO one? Yeah. It's, you can walk to the judge on leash. That, that's right. That's it. Unleash, <laughs> do the whole routine. Uh, you're going to heal through crowds, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, recalls, uh, downs in motion, sit in motion. It's brutal. 
all yeah. that kind of stuff. The, 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 the obedience is it, like Retrieve I said, it's just, yeah, it's crazy, right? I mean, it's there's top notch. There's a lot to remember, especially for new people. In this and and shout out to the helpers. People compare Shutsun to, like I said, bike work and bike shoes. You're pretty much not even protected out there. <laughs> yeah, I know. You got a sleeve on one left yeah. arm, and everything else is the scratch pants is what they do. Stop the nails from going in you. Doesn't yeah. stop teeth. I've been bit up on it. I grow yep. a beard now because I got a scar on it. I've been bit in the face mm-hmm. <laughs> and a thigh. Da da da. So yep. it's it's and, and it's persona that the bite work people PSA and they think sport dogs can't Mm-mm. be real dogs. Yeah. Is, well, my sport dog will eat your ass up. Yeah. You know. Well, then that was kind of my next yeah. question. Is you know uh, go off of um, uh, let's just say a Title Three IPO dog. Top level. A top level dog. Is this dog going to protect its handler if if needed? Maybe. Yeah, it's... It depends on how you trained it, I think. Yeah. I mean, you can have an IPO3 dog at the club level scoring great, and that doesn't mean that it's also going to be able to transition. Does it have a balance of, you know, defensive drive or prey drive? Yeah. Can, do you switch back and forth in your training? It just depends. If you want to win Schutzen, he probably won't bite a person. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's what we call point dogs. Yeah, they're operant. You know, if I'm standing there with right. a sleeve on and a dog's barking and I throw the sleeve over there, he runs over there. He's going to get you the most points in Schutzen, but you don't want to go in the back alley with this sun gun either. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You throw the sleeve over there with my dog, you're going to get tagged in the chest. Yeah. So it's all in your training because the way yeah. we train, like I said, I train with, with, with different clubs and Commonwealth and Butch and Ron, and we don't play that. Right. You got to go through the man to get to the sleeve. There's no other way to it. Now, what about the average uh, IPO dog, Schutzen dog? Uh, will they go after not go after but will they will they target on somebody wearing a full suit instead of just the sleeve so the, I, your average dog I, I think it's just dependent on the dog so like, it, like my dog sure. she I, I retired her now but she had never been a suit in her life she had only done nothing but sleeve and you know prey items or whatever and then my buddy had a suit and i was like you know i just want to see i just want to kind of and i had never even focused that in in training that particular dog had zero issue. I said, hey, threaten the dog. She came out in lots of teeth. <laughs> and I said, take off. I sent her, and she hit him right in the tricep. And I not something particularly that it's was on trained. The dog. It is it, the it, dog, it, I think, a lot. I got my dog, and again, I talk about Sam a lot because we're close. And yeah, yeah. I got my dog. I, I paid for my dog at a young dog's age. And I said, Sam, come on, put a suit on. I'm going to see what this dog's about. Yeah. Bit Sam up. Sam says, man, you're going to jail. Right. <laughs> bring this dog on the field. Yeah. Let me take him. Let me sell him to somebody for yeah. protection. <laughs> um, man, there's there's just so much information. There's a lot of dogs, man, that that are titled that will not that they, they, they cannot confront like an assailant. You know what I mean? There's plenty of dogs like that. But yeah. on the converse, there's other dogs that that can. So sure, we just had a question come in on uh, Facebook Live. Um, so if you guys have more, get them in. Yeah. Um, what's a good age to retire a Schutzen Title Three GSD, or does that depend on the dog? It depends on the dog. I, I, we got a guy in my club. He had a dog. We've. You said. I'm sorry. She said. To retire. retire. To retire from the sport. Yeah, I, I, I'm assuming retire a Title Three GSD. That eight. dog doesn't want to retire usually, but eight, yeah, eight. I'm I'm not going past eight. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Respectfully, it's a lot of dog. impact. You know, I think the health of the dog is the always always the most important. But if she thing. started the dog at five years old and it had five years of of of, of not of the hard work and training. It depends on the dog. Yeah, that's a hard one to answer. You know, it depends on the dog. Yeah, a lot of a lot of these questions are, as they are every week, dog dependent. Of well, course, sure. a lot of shits and people got their dog, and they always thinking about their next dog. What's yeah. the dog yeah. they have? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that's because that's dog. my next question. One of my questions was going to be the age. Like you said, if she started at five, so obviously that's not a big deal. It it's like boxing. You yeah. got some people to start at five, and you got some people to start at twenty. Who got okay. who's more experienced, but who's also got a little more lives in them? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, that's a good point. Um, and from watching the YouTube videos of IPO, um, I noticed that most of the dogs were German Shepherds. Is there what? I noticed that as well. That's what started the sport. Yeah. I Germany. Mean, that's, that was, it was about the breed survey. So, so in, in your guys' professional opinion, is that the best breed for Schutzen work? I'm a pit bull guy by heart. Okay. I came up with pit bulls and, and bulldogs, American bulldogs. I tried it. I wanted to be a top-level competitor, and I see what's winning. You know, you're not going to take a donkey to a Kentucky Derby. <laughs> so, in Schutzen, it's hard to beat a shepherd. It is. You know, when, you, hmm. when you're when talking top level of the world is what I did, and it shows you that's the dog because it's a, only a German Shepherd Championship. When I talk all the countries come together and compete against the United States, it's all German Shepherds. Yeah. But then you have DVG, you have AWDF, yeah. you have championships within 
the United States that's an all breed. Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, you got a shepherd somewhere there on the podium at the end of the day. So why do you think that is, though? Because, I mean, if you look at all the other sports, it's what? Yeah. It's heavy in mouths, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, that's the popular... They're back and forth. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that part of it is also, like, the top competitors. What dogs were they using? What were the training methods? And then what was the already said, all right, this training method is successful. What breed can I apply it to? Can right. you train a Mali like you train a German Shepherd? No. Maybe. But uh, I, I wouldn't. Yeah. You know, there's going to be a big difference. So I see, I see the Do top competitors. Kids? Yeah, exactly, right? Like my two children, I can't even treat the same. They're both <laughs> girls, and they beat me up, I think, most of the time. But, yeah, uh, yeah I, I think part of it is like, hey, the breed that started it, right? And then the training methodology that came out of that, and then what was easily applied to other people. I can teach you how I did this with this breed. They're easy to train. They are. Point blank. They have more look, trainability. In look across the world. What's been a dog in the military for yeah. 100 years? and. In every police department. And we're always know. talking about that on the show, though, mm -hmm. because it's like, you know, back in the 80s, it was the Doberman and the 90s. 90s and the Rottweiler. Yeah, you know. and then it became the German Shepherd. And now it, it just seems like everything's kind of switching. Yeah. Even the police departments are kind of Malinois. like switching over to the, yeah, to the Malinois. So that's kind of my, 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 my build up to this question is. If, if I'm in the military right. and I'm going to, in Iraq and I got to send a dog in and I got I want a Mali with me. Yeah. Because he's a simple son gun. Yeah. He ain't going to think twice. You but, know what I mean? But, I don't but he may the, turn around and bite me too doing it, a mix up. Yeah. It. It's you feel me? Oh, yeah. You feel me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I have a Mal. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> he may tag me along the way. Yeah. yeah. It's you know? not the common man's dog, right? right. Like, yeah. that's an advanced, like, mm -hmm. okay, we got a job to do. It's task specific. Let's go get it done. That's a great I'm dog. I'm going to battle. I'm going to war. I'm going with a mouth. Right. I want yeah. a great dog. I don't give a crap what. So so you don't see uh, the Mal taking over shits in, in, in I see great Malinois in Schutzen, no question. But yeah. it's a different type of dog, and it's a different performance that I see. Right. Um, I see a much more, and this is just opinion, I'm sure. No, no, people, that's why. The, a yeah. lot of the, like, obedience, for example. Obedience with the Malis, to me, is like, Precision, but 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 they changed that because they were kicking ass too much. Exactly. Now they changed the rules a little bit, giving yeah. back to his shepherd guys. You know, the dog doesn't have to heal with the head straight up, and yeah. he doesn't have okay. to. Be, you know, because because the, the German shepherd can't do what a Mali do. You know, so. yeah. Like in the healing, the the Mali started getting amazing like position. Yeah. Like okay, we're gonna teach the dog the position to be in at all times, and it was incredible. But you lose some of the relationship. I, I, there was a thing I was watching with Ivan uh, Belabinov, who's like a world champion, breeder of Malinois, and he was talking about this in particular, how the connection between dog and handler was getting lost yeah. for a position. Yeah. And so there's like this kind of internal friction with that, and I sure. agree with it. A lot of the German Shepherds I see, they have eye contact. There's like a, a kind of relationship going on in the healing, whereas Malis are just damn perfect precision. <laughs> But it's like a, a machine a robot. versus yeah. a relationship that's going on sometimes. Yeah. It's not all cases, of course, but Yeah, no, that makes sense. Is there is it only shepherds that are winning the world championships? It can't be nothing but a shepherd. Oh yeah. oh really? Unless it's an all breed like AWDF or DBG. Yeah, but when you say right? world, I'm thinking yeah. WSV World Championship. That's it's right, all which is all German shepherds, right? And that's why that to me is that's the ultimate. Right. And it, is that because they only allow only that's right. Right. So the oh, DB, that's fucked up. Well, yeah. well, you, got, <laughs> you, have, you, uh, you have other breed championships. Yeah, you have other. You have other breed nationals. Yeah, but you don't have a, you don't have the world. So you got you got DVG. Hey world. man, I got yeah with with the AWDF, the DVG. DVG is an all breed organization, but it's not the world. They have a world championship though. Where in Europe? Well, fuck it. Let's make one. Let's yeah. go. Fredericksburg, Virginia, next but, but year, we but we June 12th. Sponsored by Off Leash. <laughs> Sponsored by Off Leash and the dog together. show. We put a team together and go to Europe? A five yeah. dog? Do we? I'm, I think if you win at the DVG Nationals, you can go off to the DVG okay. Worlds. I'm almost certain about that. In fact, Aaron, I think Aaron O'Shea is going with... She has a German Shepherd. She's with Vegas. I think she's trying to go out to the Worlds for DVG. Okay. Yeah, I would have to assume that they're going to open that up at some point. Though the I, the world the, the WUSV is a German Shepherd only organization. That so that right now, that world right not, now, it'll never change. But it is so well. They used to not allow worlds. women in the military, and that changed. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like I it's guess. evolution. You know, yeah. it's gonna 
you know, things are going to evolve, I would have to assume, right. unless that's the one thing that right. never evolves. I mean, even I the guess. name of Shitson is, mm-hmm. is fucking evolving. True. That is true. You was, know, so... With uh, certain championships, you can't even bring nothing but a shepherd to a, a, to a championship, a national. What about the FCI? You know, I'm talking about for the qualifier for the world. Right. You know, you yeah. can't even bring... You can't bring a different breed. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy, man. FCI championships. <clears throat> How strict are they on, on that, on the bloodlines and the breeding? Is that... Is that Getting they, stricter. They, yeah. yeah. That, okay. Stricter. That was my next question. So a lot of health things that are now mandated, <clears throat> right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Like, so what would disqualify you? One nut. One, I mean, oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I'm being for real. Like, yeah, I mean, no, yeah. Breed flaw, right? Yeah. Like, okay. Obviously, like a pigmentation. Like, if you got a liver German Shepherd, you can't. Right. You're considered a flawed. So. Okay. You know, you got to have breedability, paperwork. right? Breedability. Right. And, I mean, and also, it's the standard now is, is uh, elbows and hips. That's right. A stamp is you required, you know, now, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't have to have an A stamp because that's from Germany, but you can have the. Um, Wayne. O, you can have OFA. Wayne says, Wayne Segreto, I don't know if you guys know I'm, him. Um, Wayne says like Marty, <laughs> or Wayne Singleton. He says the FCI World Championships is all, all breed. breed, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Right. that's what you said. Yeah, so, so. And, and actually, an American came in second place. Oh, Wayne Singleton. Yeah, an American came in second place at an all breed Singleton. World Championship. Wayne Singleton. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Frank Phillips came in second place last year, I believe. Or Frank, I thought Frank won. No, he came with, in second. Shot? With what? What type of dog? German Shepherd at an all breed World oh, Championship. Chief Floyd yeah. bred that dog, didn't he? That's right, American bred dog. So they're trying to make sure it doesn't change. (laughs) (laughs) So you had an all breed and the German Shepherd still won. Sorry, Wayne. Yeah. (laughs) But did did it? He came in second. I thought, I thought, I thought. No, man, I'm telling you, he was the the vice. Mm. I'm telling you, he was second place. So little do you guys know, Sean, Uh, that, (laughs) of course, I did my research on these guys uh, pre-show. These two guys. Yeah, Yeah. both of them, right? And Facebook stalked him. I, I ain't course. on Facebook. He's not on this Facebook. Guy's off the grid. Oh yeah, he's off the grid. He's not. He's, Sam, he's not exactly Sam off the grid. I can tell you that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I actually found a couple of videos of Mark T. I'm bad boy online. Oh, it was like three. Right? And in all seriousness, I I found one video where he was giving a demo of an IPO helper workout, and fuck me. I was sweating in the first 10 seconds watching this shit. Like, you guys take this shit serious, right? I mean, it is top-notch physique, you know, um, mental clarity. I I mean, Mark, that was impressive, man. Like, I'm sitting there watching your routines, you know, with... You had, I believe, you had your your whole scratch uh, suit. I, I on. made that video in 2013. Yeah, they laughed at my ass when I went to Tennessee for the world <laughs> for the world trial. Yeah. and then when I got picked, the motherfuckers was online looking at it. You hear me? Yeah, uh, okay. oh, yeah. yeah. They're they're straight stealing them yeah. techniques. Yeah. No, I mean, they, you want something, you got to yeah. take it serious, well, right? You gotta think too. And I put it out there. I, I put it out there. Yeah. I, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Do it better. Yeah. Or hey, you know, I don't I don't I want everybody to to succeed. Me and Mark talk all the time about how to get picked, how to go to championship. Yep. You know, I hold nothing back. I want someone to be just as successful as I was. That's That's, awesome. It was impressive, man. I don't remember how long the video was, but uh, definitely uh, inspirational, though, right? It was, yeah. man. Like I, I almost got up and started working. Mm-hmm. Almost, I didn't. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna it? need you to step it up in 2018. Man, I've been get it then, man. Yes, I, I got you. I, 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 there you go. I appreciate that. <laughs> but honestly, I do believe that's going to help the younger helpers For out. Sure. I mean, that's, how that's can it point. not? That you're you're point. an experienced uh, veteran who's who's been to the top, and it's like, look, if you want to do these things this in this in this field, this is what you have to do. Yeah. And that's how I knew how serious this shit was when I saw that. I was like. All right, he's not just catching dogs. Right. You know, he, this is... It wasn't a dog in that video, was it? Not one dog. But you know what, Joe? That's that's like the standard if you want to be successful in anything. Right? No, I, I completely like, agree. That's why I respect it yeah, so much. But everything you know. simulated a dog in that video. Absolutely. Well, the whole workout was based on working dogs. You know, it, it's hard to find... I don't know if any of you... I know you have a couple of girls you said. I don't know if you have any kids. But, it, you know, it's hard to... Uh, to, to preach constantly work ethic to your exactly. kids. You know, this is what it, yes, mm-hmm. you can have what you want. You can do what you want when you get older, but it's not going to be given to you. You're going to have to work for Absolutely. it. Yeah. And that, what you did in that video is Thank a you. prime example of what I preach to my children mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. It's you want something. Look, here is a guy who's already done it. Mm-hmm. He's already done it, and look what the hell he's doing, you know? He's out there grinding in this mm-hmm. hot-ass day 
with the full Fully scratch suit, suit on. Training and, vest, everything. And, know. you know, just just getting it. So, you know, much, much respect for that. Um, so let's kind of jump back into uh, the, the competition, uh, so to say. Explain to me, if you can, um, how difficult is it to title jump? to go from one to two, two to three Well, for the dog. And then we'll go to the, to the helper. Again, we train our dogs to the three. Yeah. So, if, you, if you're smart, you're training for the three and then and start, and you're not training for the one because the, the so three, can you skip one and two or do no, you still have to go? But three the three like, is if I can do a three, I damn sure can do a two and a one. Cause the difference between a one, a two and a three is specific events. So you're kind of, if you train for the three, you've trained for every event and then you just have to subtract some events for the one. It's kind of like all you can eat buffet. Two, add some for the three. So you're dumbing down it. Right. For the so like retrieves in the obedience routine of an IPO three, <clears throat> you're going to throw the biggest dumbbell on right. the ground. For the IPO two, you're throwing the medium sized dumbbell. For the IPO one, you're throwing the smallest dumbbell. You know, you're not. So essentially, you're kind of just grading the dog, and it's no not a lot of difference. The helper has to memorize, you know, the level one routine, mm -hmm. level two routine, and level three routine, so they can appropriately do it in a trial. A lot of times you'll have like a handler in the middle of the trial and they just freaking flip and don't remember what's next. And you got to be like, hey, it's the back transport right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you be, you be telling them. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, turn, turn me around. If they're your friend. Them. Yeah. If they're nice. If I don't like you, <laughs> yeah. you just stand You're there and stare at them. <laughs> Get You're off done. the field. <laughs> yeah. And and for a, a helper, what's the process? If somebody If somebody's watching right now who's inspired by you two and they want to get into – IPO uh, helper work, what do they do? Besides, so they've looked up a local reputable club. Um, they just go out there and grind, uh, find for, a mentor. For and, me, that's, that, that is super crucial. Like yeah. The first thing you got to do is find somebody else who's already been doing it, knows how to do it, and can teach you. Because yeah. without that, forget it. Like You're not going to go on YouTube and watch Mark Torrance and think – you can apply this stuff. Yeah. You got to get dogs. Under so a your couple belt. people tried that. Oh yeah, I was oh, gonna say that definitely someone has tried. Oh, I'm, sure. Sure. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. Well, it happens in every. Mm -hmm. I'm on. I'm on unorth unorth What do you say? Unorthodox. Unorthodox. You know, yeah. but I make yeah. it work. You know, you know, I'm I'm kind of unorthodox. I, I don't, but I teach. Okay? Yeah. And that was one of my ultimate goals because I'm a teaching helper now, and, and 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 I teach proper fundamentals and foundation. But you know, and I have pet peas and all that, but. You definitely need a mentor. Like I said, I got it. I yeah. found I found Matt Ford on Google. Right, he's one of my best friends. You know, blood couldn't make us no thicker. Yeah, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And how often are you guys training? Oh yeah, What's every me? single week. Every, I know every week. It's, it's for, maybe for me. maybe seven times a day, right? And it depends if you're trialing. I got a trial coming up, like you just mentioned a while ago. How soon can you go from one to a three? I go. I'm going for a two next week. Okay. And in the following week, I'm going for a three. Got so it. it's, it's right now I'm in everyday mode because I want the dog in a certain mode. Yeah, you know, within four or five days a week. Like yeah. uh, for me, down in uh, I'm down in San Diego, mm -hmm. and last week I trained three different times with three completely different groups. Um, you know, I think part of it is where you are, how much density of the sport is around you. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of it too. Like there's groups out in like uh, Iowa, it's pretty spread out. There's sure. not a lot of density, so they're doing what they can do nearby, uh, but. Getting back to your question, I think the first step, you know, find a mentor, find a club yeah. that they can groom you. The next thing you got to do. Do your homework. Don't yeah. just find any club, man. For sure. You got to go back and change everything. If it was the well, way. I mean, we even say that about dog training, right. you yeah. know, just regular yeah. obedience, pet sure. obedience. Yeah, training. man, because once I pulled up and I saw Off Leash Canine, I was like, oh, Off Leash Canine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I have a great reputation. Thank yeah. you, sir. You thank know, you. honestly, I mean, thank when you. I think of dog training, I think of Off Leash, off -leash yeah. Canine. Oh, thank I you very do. much. Appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. So, like, a good way for, like, somebody brand new, know. never done this. Yeah. Like, if you see that video, Mark, somehow you got to be able to reach out to that person. Most people, you could just Facebook stock and, and i've had a lot in. of people reach out to me like i said i'm not on the facebook you know yeah. i do have an instagram mm -hmm. you know i post dogs i post i do like bikes and, i do too man you know that's so, something we have in common so and that's yeah. something so you know it's, it's hard to find me but if you find me and if i take to you i'll give you the world and he'll yeah. point you in the like Literally. these people are are good people right like yeah. they've gone through the struggle they'll point you to like oh you live in chicago i know so and so you live over here. Let me see if I know somebody who can point you in the right direction. So that's a good way to connect with the right. You people. called me the other day about a guy. Hey, <laughs> yeah, know, ironic. That's right. Yeah, I, I saw a guy mm -hmm. and he was trying to learn some stuff. I said, "Hey, you're in Maryland. I know a guy, right?" So that's, that's a good works. way. And then that's you awesome. gotta get you gotta get classified or certified, however you want to call it. Um, 
obviously the entry level helper is going to have far less skill set and understanding, but still might be able to do a trial. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. You get your feet wet, you start getting experience. And the hard part is getting dogs. Like you got to get as many possible dogs for me, as many breeds as possible, because that experience is not something you can make up. You got to get that through the work. And then as you build that, you know, you start rising up in the classifications to regional level or national level, hopefully. It also depends on what your goals are. If you don't want to compete at the highest level as a helper, you want to be an awesome club training guy. Yeah. That's more important in my book sometimes. Such so. a good guy. That's, so my question, <laughs> how, many, how many different jobs is there to pick from? As far as in Schutzen? Mm-hmm. You got, you got helper. You got competitor. Track. You have track layer. Track layer. You have judges. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's my goal. Teaching I do want to. I want to be. I want to be. A, I'm a teaching helper now. Mm-hmm. You know, and I do want to be a judge down the line. That's okay. You know, I'm not looking for it right now, but down the line, you know, that's my ultimate goal. You got goal. people on committees that help the organizations run. We're we're part of the GSDCA helper committee. Mm-hmm. So like we're rewriting the the rule book for the helpers. You know, trying to make things as efficient as possible. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can be involved. Uh, but ideally, I think everybody should get a dog, mm-hmm. get on the field, and feel what it's like to title. And it's the same thing in the club. You have your president, you have your VP, you yeah. got your training director, gotcha. you yeah. got your board. That's you know, right. It's very. It's a lot. This is a political sport. Mm-hmm. Don't let this. <laughs> I don't want to turn nobody off. Yeah. Uh, but it's serious out there. Well, of, I was gonna say. It, I mean, this is this is a world organization. Yeah. So with any. Even it's a human. small organization. People will be like, man, you really about to fight over dogs? Yeah, there's drama <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> right? Yeah. Listen, the top level dogs in the world, you know, some people are going to burn me for this. But, I mean, if we taking top five dogs from the United States to the world team, that's, you looking, that's almost like almost a half a million dollars worth of dogs. Yeah, it's a lot of money. It's a half a million dollars worth of dogs, worth of dogs, you know. Yeah. $60,000 for a dog important, you know. I mean, that there's a lot to it yeah there's a lot of sa- and here's another thing too though there's a lot of sacrifice yeah we were talking about this i'm i'm always like taken back by what it me- what it really takes for like the average person to sacrifice time financial and what they get in the end is a, a maybe a certificate or a trophy and that is all they want but then you got the top competitors. My uh, you can sell God. A pup, sell a puppy for any amount. Of, Man, sell a dog every week for 20000 I mean, They're spending money, though, right? Like, I know somebody who's going to the WDC and to the AWDF. And they're weeks a week apart. And that's travel across the country, hotels. Is that a female? I think so. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I just I'm saw it the other day. But, uh, and my, my point is she always got to say there's money. a lot of sacrifice. There's a lot of sacrifice. She got that involved. good money. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> yeah, let me be your helper money. <laughs> For real. Oh, man. I hear you, man. So let's get back into uh, into the breeding. Um, if you want to buy a, I'm assuming there's IPO breeders out there, right? All there's people them. focused on Yeah, well, that's what I mean. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, where they have, you know, bloodlines that have competed and you know at the highest levels um what would be the average cost what 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 should somebody say somebody who again who's listening to this watching this Mm -hmm. getting inspired and they're like maybe they hit up youtube they see it and they're like 2500 and do it 2500 that's the i would say that's the high end though I yeah, that 12, that seems cheap, man. Twelve. I, I see. That. I see quality breedings, you know, mm. out there that people are are not putting just like they're just not backyard. Like they care. That's fifteen like, hundred. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now. There's a breeder out in California I encountered a while ago, and I'm not trying to shamelessly plug, but I almost bought a dog from them. I love what they're doing. Uh, True Haas. Okay. The kennel. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're. I think their slogan was like. Uh, like super high quality doesn't have to ha- cost super high or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So the puppies are twelve hundred bucks and they have really nice bloodlines. The dogs are proven. You know the parents work. They're titled. I went out there personally, worked the dogs, so you can find them. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're built on that persona though that, that we think if we have to have a good dog, we have to go to Europe and get it. Mm-hmm. That's true. And like man. you said earlier, you're like T. Floyd, you're like say you got a, a bred with Frank Phillips dog. That's but right. We're breeding dogs, but and that's the we twenty five hundred I'm talking here, about. If someone's coming in and oh, say, yeah. I have money, I want to import me a dog. Mm-hmm. That's twenty five hundred. Yeah, but yeah, you can get sure. a dog here. Twelve fifteen hundred dollars. If I was to breed my, sure. my dog, mm-hmm. and you say you want a dog off my, if you like my dog, mm-hmm. you're gonna pay anywhere between twelve and fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Till yeah. it turns, till it gets on the world team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so hopefully, but no, the prices can change. Yeah. With yeah. the title, the prices can it's change that, with championships. That and then, and then, so they get their puppy. And now they want to start training for IPO. Um, not the helper, but what is the 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 owner, the handler of the dog? 
what do they do? They obviously do the same thing. They go yeah. try to find a club, right? They got to. They I got tell to. people for the first six months, Socialize. make your dog a gorilla. gorilla. Yeah, so that's the same thing. Raw, like a gorilla. raw. You, you know, just just take them everywhere. Take them to the take them to take them to the gas station. Take them to the construction yeah. site. Let them hear every noise. Ride them on the elevator. Put them on a the washing machine. And dry yeah. wise going. Yeah. You know, get that. We preach that. Foundation. We preach that for mm-hmm. pets. Same it's thing. So. Yeah. So yeah, same thing. Them. You know, we always say, you know, when you get that puppy, there's no time too too people. early where you can start taking them and putting them on different surfaces mm-hmm. and exactly. making noises around them. But most most dance. people who get in the club in the sport want to go right to bite work. Yeah. yeah. And in our club, like I said, Butch Henderson will tell you all day long, man, we don't, our, most of our dogs don't bite till they're a year old. Yeah. You know? If I know I got a good bred dog and he's there and what he's off of, I know no he's going to bite. Yeah, no need to rush it. I know he's going to bite. Right. You know? What would you think the hardest part of of training for IPO is for the dog? Is it the bite work? Is it the obedience? Is it the tracking? Dumbbells. Dumbbells? Mm. Nothing. So retrieving is a lot of points. That's dumbbells. I mean, you 45. 45? 45, 45 points out of 100 for on the obedience. Flat, yeah, right, 15, 15. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Where the, where's where's the most points gained and lost at the same so time? So you got Dumbbells. three retrieves to do, and they count for 45 out of 100 points of a long routine, right? right. So you're talking a solid hold, no chewing on the dumbbell, quick out, quick back, which is also Jumping really over, tough. jumping back with it. Clean, right? Like there's a lot of principles that you can break this down into like – a bunch of small things can't go around it going i mean some of the rule changes but so that's usually a heavy a heavy focus of effort and obedience for Mm -hmm. sure and i'd say that whatever you teach on the dumbbell like if you've got a dog chewing on the dumbbell i already i think judges are already looking at that and going let's see what you do on the sleeve in protection are you going to be calm are you yeah. going to have a calm grip, or is there going to, or is that coming from conflict between the? Yeah, because the, the process, dog? the process can be, can be brutal in dumbbell training. Yeah, man. Yeah. and it can bleed over. Yeah, for you know? sure. So like if you I gain if, here but lose here, if fresh. I'm going to train train my dog in dumbbells and say I'm going to dedicate a month or two to it, I'm not going to probably be on his ass in tracking. I probably won't be on him hard in, yeah. in protection. You know, you what's know? the what's the tracking scenarios mm-hmm. for IPO? Yeah. Out of curiosity, it's footstep. It's not air. Step, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah. Essentially, you have uh, three different levels, and the first one you're talking that, like we said, 300 paces. So 100 paces out, a turn with 100 paces, and another turn, like a so box. You. Or a U, so yeah. You. Okay. And then you got articles on the track that the dog has to indicate by, uh, usually they lay down with the article between their leg or paws. Uh, you come up, you show the judge you found the article. And then your judge is going to tell you to proceed. And Be careful of those shits in one articles. Yeah. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yeah. There's a lot of scent on those articles because because yeah. your thing is, you know, my articles, I don't have them on me, but they normally stay in my pocket. Mm-hmm. You know, when I'm home, I may throw them in the dirty clothes with me. And you know what I mean? I may. I, so I my used dog that knows. To, to pass a, a regional IPO one. I, I cheated so. like hell. <laughs> I, hell yeah. I, sold hell yeah. I, I heard this from some old, you know, people who've been there and done that. And I said, I got to try it. I yeah. soaked them in hot dog juice. And my dog, <laughs> said, who are demon you? are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might have to walk home now. You see that? <laughs> my dog left. The, How can he left, not find that? Dude, he, he lost the, the last leg. But he did a huge U all the way back to the final article. And I passed because he found that hot dog ass smelling <laughs> article. So, yeah, the, the articles are important. Dude, that's awesome. It's great. IPO 1, you get to hey, lay your own stuff. That's IPO what I two, said. Yeah. Be careful of the IPO 1 article. That's the, yeah. that's the tough Because part. that's the one that the handler can <laughs> the handler can lay his own track in IPO 1. He can use his own article. But when you get to the 2 and the 3, you have a track layer. Somebody else lays it Somebody with their else, scent. You know. Right? So that's, that's maybe, very it does, does the uh, distance increase on 2 and 3? Increases and the time of aging of the track increases. Oh wow! Right? Okay. So a three is an hour age. An hour. Age. An hour oh. age track, and then somebody else laid it, and you know it's their scent, and you don't know where the track is, right? You it, get out there, you have no idea what the pattern looks like. Uh, they laid it, and you got to just trust your dog. Oh okay. Is yeah. it on leash or off leash? It's on, but you can do it off leash. Meters, if you want to, you could. If you bad, you could do it off leash. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Have, have you seen it? Yeah, Wallace Payne did a video. Not in competition, Payne. though, hey, right? Listen, when you yeah, speak, he did when, it. Oh, wow. When yeah. you speak Wallace Payne, you speak one of the yeah, best the IPO legend. tra- legends in, in, Who's in that? the game. Wallace, Wallace Payne. Payne. Okay. He, he's I a, think he's on, man. He's man, a, I he's love a good Wallace one, Payne. Dude. That's, he's a good that's one. A, I talk to him frequently. And I, I just I, met him for the first time in San Diego like two or three weeks ago, man. I've been trying to link up, but, you know, military life moves you, so don't be judging me. Oh, man, I love Wallace Payne. Where's Wallace from? He's in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. He actually, his his helper, Jeff Batiste, did the back half of 2013 with Mid the Worlds. Okay. Yeah. So they, they got some good things coming out of uh, 
Was it South Metro? That's right. South, South Metro, Metro K9. So, yep, South Metro K9. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's cool. Shout one, out man. to those guys for yeah, sure. Some good people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. All this stuff is really interesting mm-hmm. to me. Like, uh, so methods of let's go back to the obedience portion of of uh, of IPO. Uh, what methods of training are, are accepted? Because I I don't know if you guys know this if you if you follow any of the other sports, but I believe uh, KMPV just outlawed. Um, e collars yeah, and that. and they I, tried it and I believe they pinch and prongs it. also mm-hmm. out in uh, in 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 Europe. So um, there's a big stink about that right now because it's like it's crazy, right? Well, it's a it's, big stink because I believe they tried to do the e collars here, and I believe with Debbie Zappia, she's a yeah. another high level trainer. She she won the world. She's a female to win the world. She's the only first, the first, first female, female to win the world. Wow. and an American to nice. win the world. Yeah, what was that? What was that in sixteen? Yep, I'm not sure. Nice. Yeah, Iron Von Der Super trainer. And what's her name again? Debbie Zappia. Okay. Yeah. High level trainer. Yeah, she man. she can train. She, Good. She's been to the top. And I think she had her shout out. You know, you know, how can the Germans tell us how to train? Mm-hmm. How can you tell us we can't use e collars? Right. You know? Yeah, because this e- is the United e-collars States. E collars are banned in Germany. But then, yeah. but, but how are you gonna tell us what right. we're doing in America? Exactly. Yeah. But again, it's a German sport, and they think they can rule us. And that ain't and that ain't gonna happen, you know. Yeah. We got the the Tea Party Revolution. Going <laughs> I knew something was gonna be yeah. said. <laughs> so, Freedom. so we we use e collars, we use prongs. Course, yeah. yeah, yeah, we use and all that stuff. Like, that's yeah, obvious, yeah, of course, right? of course. Like, well, come on, man. <laughs> of course, you know, like I, I think I don't people know are gonna that. use the tool. Yeah, I don't believe for a damn second. That they're not using e-commerce. Oh, you know, of course yeah. not. Of not course for a not. Second, Listen, they, oh, they got the cutest dog in the world with the scarfs around their neck. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, man. hiding yeah. the e-commerce. Yeah, exactly, yeah. dude. I'm not buying it. So, yeah, we're we're training with the the standard methods and and you know. The, yeah, I mean that's. I, mean, it, I, I just really hope that. Because now that it's kind of hit, I mean, you don't go straight to the e-collar. I mean, it's motivational. No, of course, the course, of course, of course, of course. But I mean, I, I'm a believer specifically. In the working dog world, you know, corrections are needed. You have to. You have to. It's balanced training, right? It's, it's, it's understanding it's, is clarity. Yeah. Yeah, right? I mean, Nick says it best. There's not an animal, mammal, whatever you want to call it, in the on the <laughs> planet that doesn't that only learns positive. and responds to positive reinforcement That's only. Right. You know, it's it's impossible. Have you seen the circus animals? You don't want to know what's going behind yeah, the curtain. There's no. Positive no, of course, there. of course. <laughs> long hooks, little yeah. sticks with the hooks. Yeah. yeah. No, that's just, it's that's compulsion. It's, I mean, it's compulsion in every training. Almost, you know, you have to have it. So yeah. at the clubs, they're 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 not telling you to put your e collars away, put your prongs away, and all that stuff. <laughs> no. Now, how does it? Are there sanctioned clubs, or how does it work? Yeah. Does somebody have to sign well, off well, on to, it? Well, back to that, you do know you can't use e collar in the trial. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Which. I would be completely okay Just with. Just a first saver. In the, the, club, the clubs are a sanctioned well, organizational. You know, like you have USCA, GSCC. We're organizations. Okay. You know, so. In, so in, I couldn't just open up a club tomorrow and be like. You could, but it won't be. Not that like, I would, right. but I, I uh, wouldn't. You have to have like four people. You have to have a board. There's you have certain to have a, bylaws that you'll yeah. have to abide by, but then you apply to be an officially recognized club. And they vote on Whatever it. organization, you know. So, yeah, there's there's a way, but. It's not that hard, honestly, and we were just talking about this. There's a lot of people out there who think this sport is, like, small, and I think hmm. it's massive, yeah. and people are just very disconnected. Yeah. Um, and, and you can do this without a club in certain organizations. Like true. GSTC, the, club, the organization I'm in, I can just be a member of the organization. I can pay my 35 bucks, yeah. and I can go train my dog, and I can show up, show up at a, at a trial, trial. nationals. By the way, I think Kylo pissed somewhere in here. It smells like straight pee, so <laughs> sorry, guys. I think it was in his sleep. <laughs> Can't win them all, right? <laughs> Dog, <attacked my> <laughs> Dog. <laughs> he was very trained at one point, but now that he's in my daughter's care, it's like I can't even get him to sit when I want him to now. But so anyhow, so it's Kylo's world. But so I was speaking to someone a few months ago when I was learning about all the different sports, the KMPV, French Ring, Mondio, IPO, you know, yeah. everything, um, PSA. And they were kind of explaining to me the difference yeah. between each sport and they referred to IPO as, you know, the almost the godfather of of sports for dogs and also like the country club. Mm-hmm. You know <laughs> to where, you know, every oh, every man. everyone who shows up is is you know 
collared shirts and one thing i can say yeah yeah one thing i can say is you got the biggest crowds that appears at the competitions i mean it's like watching Mm -hmm. a fucking football game (laughs) especially a championship yeah i was taught like when i first started you go to a trial you know you're gonna like wear a collared shirt you're gonna look like a like a competitor i didn't really understand what that meant but i've seen people in like full uh uh jumpsuit kind of looking things like a like an athlete Mm -hmm. right so i don't know i mean i I think that's just an old school decor again i think it's a testament to the strictness of the sport though and the discipline of the sport like i said i've been to a psa trial yeah the day i went to a psa trial guy entered with a shits and dog and took took them all to the cleaners you know and 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 i like the discipline of shitson because i'm like what are the rules to psa Mm. oh the judge can make the shit up as she goes along what what's the guideline how can you score this Right. Well, you know, if I know if I do a proper bark and hold and shoot, it's five points. Yeah. You know, if you say I got three points in the bark and hold, I know my dog skipped a bark or two. He looked at me maybe. But, right. you know, she can just burn you on paper and can't justify it. Yeah. What is the purpose? And that'll be explained next week. That's a lot of my question. You yeah, know, Jerry, really Jerry, which is that, the yeah. founder of but PSA, is coming go. in next I week. I have nothing exactly. again. Like I said, I love what they do in any the other sports, but it's just, it's not shit yeah, yeah, it's of course, a, and I don't, and I don't think anybody's kind of comparing, yeah. you know. Yeah. The, oh, the, they compare to do us. they? Yeah, they do. You know, we got sport dog. Like I said, my sport dog will give you a new one too. Yeah, you know, but they do. Do you got you, so you have personal? But you don't dog. have poli- you don't have a police that's gonna say, let me go look for a dog for the police department. Let me go look at the Schutzen guys. No, yeah. they are gonna look at the KMPV guys, you know, or the, or the Monty or ring and things like that. But you know. but Mark Mark P, um, you're a Marine. Thank you for your service, by the way. My man. Um, hoorah! I feel like the bad. working it's dogs, I, the the MWDs, I feel like they kind of almost replicate uh, the bite work portion of IPO more so than any other sport because they're it's pretty much a straight sleeve, especially the 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 military police working dogs. I'm gonna get so much flack for this right now. Go for it, Go man! For That's it. what yeah, the show's is, yeah, all yeah. about. But let me tell purpose. you, I have worked, <laughs> I have worked with. Uh, military canine units like across the military like navy marine corps uh i did it once at an air force base and honestly a lot of times it's just a hot ass mess of not good stuff in bite work related stuff like often i'm going this is something simple that we would be able to work on in ipo or whatever but a lot of times i notice that the the handlers just don't have like the education they need they kind of give them a dog and say, here are the commands you have to know, right? Like we teach them with a dang ammo box and a leash. And we say, this is the command. And they become kind of not able to problem solve, right? And then you go out into the fleet and here's your dog. And they're learning on the job oftentimes. So on the fly. Uh, yeah, a lot of times I see the bite work side of things suffer on a, on a military installation. No even full police, grips. No e- full grips. Even right? police departments I've worked with on very few occasions, I've been like, eesh, this is rough work. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I hope there are a lot more out there that I just haven't been exposed to that are crushing it, you know, but. I don't believe in police dog training. And, and, and I don't I don't believe in the, the grips the dogs give. I don't believe in. No? I don't believe in the no out commands. <laughs> I just, I just that's, don't. Yeah, that's crazy. I bet you, you know? and Sam's had some words over the years. <laughs> so. We have. We have. You know, I can that, only imagine, that, man. That stop fighting my dog stuff. Don't fly with me. You know, you're laying there and you're eating your ass up. Yeah. I'm going to fight him. Get them off. <laughs> you know, nah, you know. Sean, do you have any other questions? <clears throat> no, nah, they pretty much answered. This is a lot to take in. It really is a Gee, lot to take in. So much that I had no idea about. No idea. So what's coming up in the IPO world? I know Dude. you and I were talking yes. before the show, and I wanted to touch more on that uh, on on the show. So let let's uh, let's start yeah, from man. the beginning. So I'm. I'm personally, and I and I have no connection to this. I'm just a stupid fan right now of this thing that's happening. There's a guy, um, I, I think he's up in Michigan. His name is Brian Harvey. He started this thing last year that I, I saw. And when I saw it, I was like, uh, it's, it's cool, but whatever. This year, there was like an evolution to it, and, I, and I'll explain it in a second, that really got me excited because of the way he explained why he was pursuing it. Um, the thing is called the Schutzen League Trainers Challenge. Choo. It's a money, like, you come out here, they select, like, 10 top competitors, and we're going to have a prize of $30,000, and first place gets ten grand, second place, and they break it down up to, I think, fifth place might take a G home. But my point is, his methodology behind why he's pursuing this 
is because he's looking at all these people, all these seriously dedicated people who spend their lives like working their butts off for like trophies, right? But then he found a other another sport that inspiration. Yeah, an inspiration essentially in another venue that he goes, Why can't we have the same thing? So bull riding. Bull riding used to be a, a town to town thing. It wasn't like an international or even national kind of image. People were doing this with blood, sweat, and tears, breaking bones, and for scrap, nothing. There was nothing really there for you except, like, the pride of riding that sucker. PBR now, Yeah. Baby. Now, you're talking about the Wrangler National Rodeo bringing in millions of dollars in revenue. People, 10 million people watching on TV uh, around the, the country. Energy sponsors. Sponsors like crazy. 10 million people watch bull riding on I, TV? I, 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 don't think I, I don't. did. I did this event. I, I didn't even know bull riding was still know, on you, TV. You what channel is it on? I opened Sports in Las Center. Vegas. I opened that event and I learned about the, how many people view this because it's such a major. It's the what national. You, mean you, opened, you were saying? Sort of. Mm-hmm. I was conducting. So oh. you never asked me what I did, and <laughs> I'm the director of a Marine band, and that's what I do in the Marine Corps. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I opened that whole competition a couple of years ago when I learned, like, wow. So anyway, Brian Harvey saw this, and he goes, why can't do- – dog sport is exciting. Like, yeah. you see this bite work, mm-hmm. and you're like – Well, anybody who tries it is addicted instantly. It's addicted instantly. instantly, right? So he looks at this and goes, man, I need to get some TV uh, – cooperation let's start filming these competitors what they go through let's film all the way up to the trial let's show the drama behind it and i think he's i really believe he's onto something i i i even begged him i said hey if you're doing it again this year which he is consider me to be a helper for this because i want to be the clown in the rodeo yeah you know what i mean like (laughs) film film me doing the stuff i watched on youtube over here yeah because i'm crushing myself while working a full-time job and i'm a dad and there's something to that that americans i think connect to so he's doing the usc camps that's it yeah Yeah. that's it so like so he's raising the money this year i think it's thirty-three thousand this year so it was an extra like three grand what was was the top prize last year 10 grand i think holy shit which was won by marco coscansalo who's up in canada He's a, like a world-renowned trainer, and he's you know superstar when it comes to IPO. And in, in my opinion, I'm I'm hoping to go learn from him in August. Um, but anyway, I'm super excited about this because there's too many people who really sacrifice, like really sacrifice life, because they love this. Mm-hmm. But why can't we make a living too when people are interested, but we just haven't been able to get the word out? You know? Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm super excited about that. That, that sounds. You'll have to send me some information on that. Yeah. Brian, if you're I'd watching. I'd like to go watch it, I man. I want to be the clown in the rodeo. <laughs> yeah. And I want to ticket out to go <laughs> yeah. watch it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, so, JJ uh, Sabrice on here on Facebook wants to know, can IPO do PSA? Absolutely. Can a dog? I, yeah, I would I, have to I, assume. As I said earlier, I went to my very first PSA trial on IPO dog. I know and helped train. Won the whole thing. Absolutely. Because we have the discipline. To go into another sport mm-hmm. and do it. Yeah. And guess what? Which a lot of PSA dogs don't have the discipline. They don't have the outs. They don't have, you know, but if you can it's do the IPO, you can do those other sports if your dog can take to the suit. Right. It's just transferring from the sleeve right. to the suit. And it right? really is. Out is out. Foos is foos. And how hard can it? It's I, really not that hard. It doesn't that seem like it would yeah. be. So going from IPO to the others it's easy. is easy, but the other way is. Yeah, it's hard. Now I got to yeah. get the dog off the body, biting the body, biting right. the legs. Controlled. You know. Yeah. So it's kind of like going like the Title Three. You're training for IPO, and then you can you can step do, you it can back do, You into, definitely can do PSA. Yep, I've seen it. So That's actually, way drug of sports. One of my trainer, <laughs> one of my trainers is on here down in South Carolina. Her name's Brittany, and that, uh, uh, what's her last name? Pelletier. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. And her have been kind of going back and forth. Yeah, she, dog. she's yeah. big into IPO. Yeah, uh, she's titled. I don't know how many, but good, good for her. Quite a few yeah, dogs, good. and um, she's a phenomenal trainer down yeah. at my Myrtle Beach location. So, thanks for joining us, Brittany. Heck yeah. Um, so, what about you? What do you have coming up? Again, I'm as far as uh, You're, training my dog. I have a show next week. Mm-hmm. I'm going Title for the two, two, right? And then three going, a week later, right? Well, uh, actually, two weeks later. Two weeks but later. Yeah. So you know, and then, then there's a couple of nationals I want to go yeah. to. It's a, it's a great nationals down in Ohio. This guy right here, Mark Pallone, he was selected to go do the Nationals. This is this is one of the roads. Congratulations, and Mark. And, 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 and this, yeah, is, and this is this awesome. is a big step for him because, again, this is also, to me, is a road to the world. I mean, he, you yeah. know what I mean? Or do the Nationals. Maybe he could do the qualifier. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Next thing, you, you know what I mean? But he was selected. I was part of the uh, committee that selected him. And awesome. He's one of the main reasons why I can step aside. 
That's awesome, man. Uh, and I should say too, like, so the way this works, we didn't actually talk about this, but for these big events, what they'll do is they kind of like pre-screen a whole group like they did when he went to the Worlds, yeah. and they weed it down to a, a couple guys. So for this national, we got three guys, uh, Miko Cauldron, mm -hmm. uh, Rod Davis, and myself are going to go to that national in Ohio here in May. Very cool. Um, but when we're there, we have to compete against each other, and it sucks too because we're like all three of us are friends. Um, yeah. I've known Miko for years. I just met Rod really uh, not too long ago, but we're awesome. So we're gonna go out there. The Shout judge, out to Miko and Rod, for too, sure, man. man. They're awesome guys too. Yeah. And great. And yeah, great I know. Helpers. I know Miko. Good guy. Yeah. I've never man. met him in person, but good we've guy. talked He's quite a, a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go. Judge is going to watch us work uh, a dog each, or maybe a couple dogs. It depends what they have available, and then they're gonna pick two of us to work the highest level dogs front half and back half right two of the three two of the three right <laughs> but so the other like, one can still do the ones and twos if they're well, yeah. there okay. so the other guy is going to be the alternate in case somebody like gets hurt but they'll also work the level one and two dogs the uh, on their own right so either way uh, it's still like a constant mm -hmm. like pressure like to perform you're on that stage and and you know you're testing i yourself. mean if you're all if you're all at the same level almost is who's the best that day that yeah. it really is you know because it's all, like golf it seems both of like those guys, almost you know, are as good if not better than they're me. all competitive yeah, yeah i don't mean to compare it to a wussy sport like golf no, but, it but, is. but i used no, to play i, love golf, I played man. golf growing up Who's and and it was scratch oh shit you play play yeah i played he ain't play, no, play, i played you gotta double it up play play you know <laughs> yeah um but it's almost and you know you go out to a tournament to a three four day tournament and I mean, these are guys that i would play with on the daily basis you know and and uh one day I'd beat them. One day they'd beat me. So it's it's like right. any given Sunday, you know. It's exactly. uh, it's who made that putt. Yep, you just know? exactly. Anybody can win on any day, and yeah, it's little it. it's little nitpicks and tricks and tips. It, it does help. <laughs> it does help to have a resume. Well, and it's consistency. That's right. that's one thing. That's, that's what did thing. I say today at the seminar? Yep. I said, besides safety, I am super huge on consistency. Yeah, and I've always and place. I've always said, to kind of compare it to golf. I've always said that any any scratch golfer can go out there and and shoot a sixty seven. Yeah. But can you do it four days in a row? Yeah. Every week, and right. week out to make a living off of yep. it. And the answer is no. And and that's kind of one of my things. You know, to kind of bring this back into dog training is, you know, we often often get asked, what does it take? to be a dog trainer Less one too. Mm. um and i always say it and you're absolutely right about that but i always say it's two things it's two things that every good trainer has to have it's consistency and patience yeah. the problem is most people don't have both of those right. in combination right yeah, they may yeah. have one or the other sure. but it takes both of them to be to, to be a good dog yeah. trainer yeah, and it's something that uh the good dog trainers still have to constantly work on Absolutely. um being consistent yeah. being patient with the dog you know understanding that that dog doesn't understand your fucking language For you know sure, you got to yeah. talk to him in his language or her mm -hmm. language you know so um yeah, and I would have to assume that it's the same in in your sport, right? That that you that you practice and trial in. The 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 other thing I like about this is it's always you know it's kind of like fighting in a way. You're always like fighting you. You got to know you. Yeah. And then you've got like if we're training the seminar this whole weekend, you're working with a bunch of people who have individual uh, capabilities and strengths and weaknesses. You got to know you first before you can yeah. actually help them, right? Like it's the same thing in a trial. You get 30 dogs at a regional championship or a national championship. Every single dog, you're trying to be perfect and consistent. Right. But something will go wrong, and then you're and, tested. But it could be, if it goes right for you and it goes right for me, what is the difference? It, yeah. could, be, it sure. could be the intensity. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? It could be it could be something small as intensity. Yeah. You, you know what I love about, about the sports and the decoys and the helpers in the sports yeah. is you can it's impossible to deny the pat that's why i was when yeah. we spoke on the phone i was so eager to get you on the show because i knew for a fact it was all passion talk and here's how i know that you guys aren't rich right yeah. and if you are it's not from being an ipo hey, helper right we got all the way down there he said he's gonna pay for the food and i was like thank god <laughs> <laughs> uh, honey if you're watching it was like $15. no 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 it was 18 <laughs> straight called him out yeah, right after yeah. you pay for your dinner but seriously though i mean it's uh this you have to be passionate about this because there's stress involved yeah. there's sleepless nights involved there's yeah. wear and tear on your body involved 
and all of it for little to nothing. And guess yeah. what? And if you're a right? helper, you get no glory. No, right. In fact, oh my God, yeah. you get the opposite. You can do like you 31 of 32 <laughs> dogs, perfect. <laughs> that 32nd dog, God, it just happened to me. I just did a regional. It was a big regional. Yeah. And, and I surely I'm not perfect, you know, but sure. my God, did Facebook decide to have a field day. And everybody out there they right now. Oh my God! Get it was literally Facebook, the next day. It get was just like Facebook. you <laughs> suck. You're the worst helper ever. And I'm going. Ah, I ain't okay. never get that. That's I cool, you that. know. But but there's always truth in some of that. There's always truth in <laughs> right. some of that. You got to take what you. It's can It's always take. your fault. You got to take what you can take. <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah. It's the helper's fault. Yeah. If my dog got ran, it's your fault. If my dog out early, it's your fault. It's, it's is, done something. Is IP <laughs> is Schutzen the only sport where you're called a helper? Well, in in the sport, you're called a decoy. Yeah, okay. because in, in, that, in, in a trial, in the major trials or club trial, you're the decoy, which okay. is everything is mechanical. An athlete can do the trial yeah. if you know the mechanics, but a helper is someone who can train the dog. Mm. You know, and, and if I'm going to a trial and just to put it in perspective, I have a sleeve on. If I'm doing a, a nationals, I'm charging that dog. I'm attacking that dog. But in training as a helper. I'm being submissive to the dog. Uh, I'm, I'm being prayful to the dog. You're building them. I'm building so you're them. a coach I'm, there, I'm, but then you're a tester it, on just, the field. That's it, man. That's right. That's yeah. it. And it's hard you're to make You're making them a gorilla in change. training, right? and then you, you're there, and now you're testing it. You mm -hmm. know, It's tough to make that change. It's, it's hard to make the transition sure. because I've, I, I learned first to be a decoy. Yeah. And it's hard to me to make that transition back to try to be a, tra a, a training helper. You know, because everything I do is, you know, I, mean, I hear my coaches telling me, you're kind of mechanical, man. It's not a trial. You know, you have to help this dog come to the sleeve. You have to help this dog with the grips. You know, mm -hmm. we're training him. You know, mm -hmm. I'm in my mind. I'm going to run this. <laughs> yeah. You know. Dog comes off the sleeve in a trial. You, you charge go him. after him. Raging bull. In training, I got to freaking encourage that guy. Get him on there. Yeah. Crush me. So that's tough sometimes to that's just That's a big like, changeover. But if you get yeah. stuck in that trial mode, you can ruin that dog. That's right. And the funny thing is that that's one that's one position, right? Yes. That's one position. That's right. If you have to do it, if I, in my, you know, so my advice to anybody, if you have to do it, learn to be a training helper first. All right, that's how I started. Okay. okay. I think and then, because it's easier to flip that switch. But if you learn, like I said, I came in the sport. Yeah. I started going to seminars. I wanted to be a helper. I wouldn't even work. I was going to helpers. I was doing my own thing. <laughs> I was learning, you know, just how to be a trial helper. And, yeah. and I got to the top that way. Now, when your run is over, how can I help anybody in my club? How can I help my friends? How can I help train? You know what I mean? On average, how many people or how many members are in clubs? Um, or your your clubs, for example. 15, 20 active. Okay. Maybe. I've seen clubs as small as like five. Get together once a week. Yeah. I uh, wish some, it was five. Some, five good dogs any day. I, over I'll 20. tell you, it really just, uh, like, okay, like South Metro. You know, you probably yeah. got a big old. Trouble Wallace? Yeah. yeah. Or OG Indianapolis, who's yeah. super successful regularly. They probably got a pretty si good yeah, size yeah, group. Yeah. But like down in San Diego, you've got clubs uh, as small maybe. as five and as big as fifteen, or you know whatever. Um, shout out to to Chris Taylor out there and Danny Craig; those guys are doing awesome stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean it it just depends. Mm -hmm. And honestly, there's a lot of people who just love doing this sport but can't stand people, and that's another aspect that I don't understand. Because if you want to yeah. do this, you can't do it by yourself. No, yeah, way. period. Yeah, yeah. So if you love it, you better figure out. Why would how you to want to get do it by yourself? You can't. Yeah, why you, would it's you want to? It's impossible. Yeah. It literally is impossible. You need a helper. You, you need someone to to be there as you a, need a as second set of eyes. Second set of eyes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So anyway, there's a lot of people like that though that just cannot get relationally in line to be successful, but they mm -hmm. have talent. And yet they let that get in the way. It's unfortunate. So do the training helpers, do they do they also assist with uh, the other aspects of the sport other than bite work? So the obedience portion yeah, of I've it. Yeah, I played tracks for plenty of people. So you guys got a lot of shit you mm -hmm. have to learn, too, well, yeah, coming it's like in. It's like, not yeah. just putting a sleeve on, learning how to catch a dog and and working you know, the, the rubber bat or whatever. Most clubs have a training director. That's he, right. I, he, can, he can run the field. Mm -hmm. He can teach you obedience. He can, he can work right. your dog. Yeah. You know, he, he's a person who has experience in the whole sport. He can show you all three phases. The best, way to, training up, director. The best way to come up is having your own dog. Because right. if you're a, a trial helper and you don't know what that person has gone through, in my opinion, that's tough. That's, that's, that's a hard thing to do. You, you want to understand. And so bring your own dog through this. Go through the, the struggle. Figure out what it's like when a helper does something, you know, herky jerky, and it makes your dog make a mistake. Now, when you're the helper, you want to be fair. You know, you don't need to be like super soft on a dog mm -hmm. or nothing, but you got to be fair yeah. to the team and be consistent and safe and all those things. You know, what um what 
what position is like the longest running? So, for instance, you say a dog is retiring basically around eight, eight. nine. Mm-hmm. As as a as a helper, or as a decoy, or as a, a handler, what what position in IPO do you think is the longest lasting gig? Um, without you know moving into a different spot, handler, Help. handler, handler. Yeah. You can compete for your, your with your own dog forever, as many dogs as you can. You got get people, in there. little kid, they got little uh, programs now. You know, handler, junior handler courses, oh, and things cool. like that. Okay. It's crazy, most man. Important so position, awesome. Mm-hmm. Most important position to me, though, is the the people who are teaching, right? Like right. the people who are grooming the next generation of the sport. Of course. Like this is for me the most vital and most important part because without those people, it pretty much dies, right? So. Yep. Yep. Now. I was when I was watching IPO videos. This may be pure coincidence, but I felt like when you guys caught the dog and you you do your little running thing with the rubber bat, the dr- the drive with the stick. Yep, I felt like there was a cadence that I was hearing. Is that coincidence? Was or? you there today at the seminar? <laughs> Two, three, four. Uh, hey, I, I'm, ca- I'm so da- there is I'm a cadence out there. Yeah, you got to dance out there, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. this dude so, can dance, man. I'm telling you, he was uh, out there. I teach- watched a few of your no, videos. Man, he was no, out there teaching today, and I said, man, you dance, don't you? And he started saucing, man. Said, oh yeah. shit! Did you? Did you not? Yeah, I did, man. Because you know that's how I got my wife. <laughs> hey. um, no, there, there's like uh, specified rules and, and uh, steps that you got to memorize for the routine. Uh, for example, when we drive a dog, it's you, it's almost always going to be five, five, and five. You're going to go five paces with a stick hit, five paces with a stick hit, five paces and a halt. Yeah. You know, so you're going to get into this because you're not going to be out there going one, two, three, four. Uh, and, two, and, the, and the people three, in the audience, uh, this is what I was telling you, the people in the audience knows what's coming. Yes. And like I was saying with other sports, when the judge can do random stuff and say, oh, yeah, I want the helper to do this. Right. You know there's a reattack after the escape. That's right. You know there's two sticks coming after the reattack. You know it's a lockup coming. You know it's a your back transport coming. You can judge it Dude. yourself. It's a standard. Yeah. You know, it's a standard. What's yeah. it feel like, Mark, when you know the courage test is coming in that stadium? Everybody's like this. Nice. Man. Just on there, they're just like, who's going to freaking crush this? Yeah. This is the moment. You know, it all leads up to this. It's, that, it's, it's go, always fun to watch one. those nasty hits on you. No, that's the most yeah. hell it ain't, part man. Of the trial. I hate that part of the trial. That's I love stressful. it. I, I, well, I I'm not in it, it so. Yeah. So let me get to a few of these uh, comments, questions, and stuff on Facebook, see if we have anything related here. And JJ says, I always say his last name wrong, it's Seabrassy, not Seabreeze. It'll be Seabreeze probably next week too, JJ. Sorry about that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Melissa, it's unrelated. Um, Do me a favor, just email me, info at thedogshowpodcast.com. I will answer your questions. And uh, Midnight Dog uh, keeps coming up on the comments. Don't know if that's any relation to you guys or if it's a club. There's a free plug for you guys. And I'm Midnight Dog. He, he's uh, Mark the Night Train. The Torrance. Midnight Dog. Midnight Dog, is that what it is? I yeah, thought but I'm not night. on Facebook, though. That's true. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, one last question I have for you guys. And of Someone's course, saying the Midnight Dog? Yeah, somebody is. <laughs> shout it's out, uh, a shout out right there, man. Becky... Monahan, thank you, Becky. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> All right, um, the good here. <laughs> one last question, and of course, if Sean has any, and if anybody has any last-minute questions on Facebook, IPO related, please um, go ahead and get them in, and we will get to them. My last question is pretty simple for you guys: uh, front line, front half, <laughs> back line, back half. What's the difference? Stress. Okay. And the pressure is nasty. Stress and work. Okay. The front half is it, broken up. So the front half, okay, when it, when it, when the trial starts, you have the front half helper. He does the bark and holding the blind. Okay. Then he does the escape. That's a bite. That's a bite on the escape. He does the reattack. That's another bite on the reattack. He does a bite on the back transport. That's three bites. And he does a lot of running. Mm-hmm. He runs on the escape, maybe twenty to thirty paces. A lot of prey. He runs back, maybe fifteen to twenty paces. He goes out, you know, three bites, a lot of running. To me, they're the workhorse of yep. Schutzen. No okay. Back half helper is known to be, supposed to be, hashtag, the better helper, mm. the safer helper. Okay. He comes out after you've done all this work. <laughs> you can tell I never got the back half. He comes out after you've done all this <laughs> work. I got, I got, and he's yeah. flipping his stick around. I got, some, I got some for this, though. And he catches your dog. He runs about 10 paces, stops, and another 10 paces. He gets two bites. Yeah. You know, but he does get the stress Man. of catching that dog coming from 100 yards. And you meeting in the middle, 
he gets all the stress of sure it can go wrong you sure. can break this dog's neck possibly for sure man. you can you know you're going to get all the flack so the stress is on the back half helper i don't necessarily necessarily <laughs> think they're the better helpers you know but sometimes you just too I, good at the I have a feeling this is i have a feeling this is not the gig you want this is an ongoing <laughs> debate the in the IPO I would, I mean, helper you, world, no, right? No, no, I, I, a lot of lazy people want the back. They're willing to deal with the stress because, again, I, mean, yeah. I did 100-plus dogs at the world, and Jesus. I mean, you're talking running 30 yards yeah. every time, coming back 20 yards. Every time. So, so the sounds half, awful. Refer back to that. Dogs <laughs> after dog. Video. Sounds and then, terrible. And, 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 then, and then they say switch, and he runs out there, and he catches the dog, flips the stick a little. Right. But, but the front half guy, you know, sets the st the stage, right? Like the dog comes out, doesn't know who the, the bad guy is, and that front half guy or guy whatever is going to put the pressure into the dog. And a lot of times when you see on the back half a dog that, like, can't handle the back half helper pressure wise and just leaves the field it's because of the work the front half has done a good back half helper you know a lot, there's a lot out there you know uh, he can see from the front half oh what yeah about to deal with oh yeah You're you know I, you kind of line him up and he knocks him down but that's right you know but it's a t it's a team effort in that and again, way but man back half sucks man yeah i you keep know. getting back half typically now and i think it's partially because i'm tall and uh -huh. I, I don't know what it is but i freaking hate it because i know it's coming like you're seeing him doing all the work and okay he's at this checkpoint okay now he's here here we go i gotta run out in a second and the whole field like i said at this moment Stops. it just goes dead si like you could hear them grass just waving and, you're, <laughs> and, and listen at the highest level you get no no breaks no you know like like i said again I, we reference the worlds because we're talking the highest level right yeah. the judge doesn't give you all these Critiques, long critiques to break. Yeah, and the rest is dog. It's literally dog after yeah, dog so. after dog. Right on, so cool man. Uh, Sean, hold your questions if you have any. Mm -hmm. um, Dwayne on here asked a really good one. Uh, he says he sees a lot of helpers that end up with shoulder issues. Mm -hmm. uh, any ways to prevent that? Any recommendations? Yeah. Sean said that. Uh, Dwayne. No, 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 Dwayne. Dwayne. Dwayne Holmes. Yeah. So a lot of helpers I see, they try to work with their shoulder. Like they try to ma basically. The bicep and the shoulder become the predominant force. For me, a lot of times I'm looking at this part, the, the upper pec shoulder as one unit, and I try not to let those things kind of come apart. Yeah. A lot of times you see these people like in the escape. Like a golf swing. Yeah, man. Uh, the escape, uh. they get out away from their body. Naturally, sure. this becomes a weak point. If you can keep it closer, uh. now it's strong. In the drive, same thing. You're you, using it as a big piece. You're gonna. Uh, ironic. I just had shoulder surgery yep. in yeah. December. Yeah. yeah. And an ironic thing is, I had a total shoulder replacement, but it's my right shoulder. I catch the dogs with the left. I yeah. work the dogs with the left. But this is my stick hand. Uh, ah. You know, uh, so. Any tips from you? You just had surgery, so have, your tips it, are it, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no, kidding. Listen, <laughs> listen, I can give the tip. Listen to the signs and don't wait too late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Take care of your body. Yeah, you know? for sure. If it's, if it's telling you something, you know, I'm, I was five years too late getting this surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Dwayne, hopefully that answers your question, buddy. Um, Sean, you have any? Dwayne, I was going to talk to him about injuries. Yeah. What, what serious injuries has either one of you? I mean, I know you talked about bites. Yeah. Um, and you, you start talking about shoulder. Now we know your shoulder replacement, right? Total. So, yeah. This total. Total so, shoulder so, replacement. Uh, <clears throat> our, wearing the, tears for real. One of the guys that we, you know, we both consider like like a mentor, Steve House. Uh, he's uh, one of the teaching helpers here at the seminar this weekend. That dude's entire body I has had surgery. Like Shot. every knee, <laughs> got every no shoulder. Because he got no quit in him. I watched the him bulldog. at a nice. Seeger show, which is a, uh, a show dog event. There's a protection portion of it. Mm -hmm. I watched his bicep separate and like roll up into his arm. And he still was going to go out there and work more dogs. I was like, sit down. Are you out of your mind? He's you know? rare. He is a he's, rare he's bird. He's very rare. But my point is only to say this is a contact sport, period. Yeah. If you're a football player, you know you're going to get So the hit. heart's outlasting the body in, the, in those, in in those situations. Times, man. If I can do it again, I'm listening to my body. Right? Yeah, you got to. You got to take care of yourself. I think you got to eat right. I think you got to stretch. A lot of guys don't even warm up. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, you know, he makes fun of me. I'm, I'm kind of a jackrabbit. I get on the field. And I have to run the field. I got to do a couple sprints at different speeds. I got to do some backwards moving, open up my hips. I don't think it's going to last another 10 years. I met I this guy that. in Illinois. It was 2016. Yeah. <laughs> and we were actually going against each other to yeah. be the helper. And I'm like, I'm sitting there, man. I got a cheeseburger in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and he's 
out there running around in front of the judge. Oh, he did the routine man. by himself five or six times. <laughs> and Tim say, you know, one of my other mentors, Tim Greenfield, he says, oh. you going to get out there and show the young boy what to do? I said, Hell. I got to save this energy. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Gotta save it. Oh, nice. That's a good story, right? That's fun. Um, that's Eric wants to know if you have a preferred method of driving dogs. Hell yeah. Okay, and let's we're hear We're both it. opposite. Let's hear it. That's all right. Go ahead, Mark. You're the world champ. <laughs> <laughs> run drive for me. Yeah. But everybody can't do a run drive, buddy. Um, to me, I can, if you can show power with the run drive, I prefer it because I can move a dog way further. Sure. Doing a performance, then you can skip a dog. Mm. I promise you. Okay. You know, I can cover ground and I can cover distance, but again, skip drive, and I'll let Mark take it. It's just so. <laughs> uh, so I like to do like a, a power teeth. skip. Um, basically, you're replacing a foot with another foot constantly throughout the, the skip drive. Mm -hmm. For me, I can get <laughs> over the dog, yeah. and I can really put like a presence. It's not so much anything other than just like being on the dog and imposing my will onto the dog. Now I'm tall, I can. My stride, I can make that big and move that sucker across the field. You know, Mark is doing a run. He, he does like oh, a hybrid, Oh, you're tall, right? so I'm doing a run because I'm short. Uh, in a way. But <laughs> yes, yeah, like I do like a run skip. He does a kind of hybrid of the two, too, which is really cool because yeah. not a lot of guys can do that either. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, I think the, the important thing to take away is do what comes most natural to you. Sure. Anything that isn't natural, you're going to have to think about, and now you screwed up. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. Eric, hopefully that answers your question, sir. Um, all right, guys. This is your chance. Plug whatever you want to plug. Yeah. Let's let's. Uh, if they if you want people to reach you, how do they reach you? If you got uh, clubs or <laughs> training companies, he's in witness protection. I swear, like you can't <laughs> even find the guy. Honestly, anything you want to plug, go ahead and, uh, hey, uh, and we'll get it out there. Big shout out to the Greater Washington D.C. Schutzen Group. You know, it's one of the longest clubs in the, in the Maryland Brandywine area. Forty years running. Uh, big shout out to my other club, Commonwealth Butch Henderson, Ron Marshall. Brian, Megan, um, you know, we got a lot of good people in the clubs. You know, if they want a shout out, they can find us. Commonwealth Working Dogs, or you can Google us, Greater Washington, D.C. Schutzen Group, you know. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And Mark I got, Pay. I got a question for you before I plug anything. Go for it, man. You got a scratch suit recently. I did. How did you like it? I haven't even put it on yet, man. Okay. I actually, you You're know, slacking. I get, I have a couple of scratch suits. And the reason why I get them, to be honest, I mean, obviously, I, I do have a working dog. So it does help with sure. that when I'm working on mm -hmm. obedience because he's a dick. <laughs> um, but he's a mouse. So it's, it's, he's supposed it's to expected. be. Yeah. Right. Um, but really, it's what was it great. from? It's, was it Rat? Yeah, I got yeah. one from Rad. After Rad. I saw his, I was like, man, that thing's fire. I got to mm -hmm. get one of those. Yeah, Rad Dog's Rad. Yeah, yeah man. They, Shout they, out to those guys so for sure. The reason I brought that up, man, um, Christine Kisser up in uh, Canada, she has Rough Dog Sports Inc. Yep. So a, a couple months ago, after that regional, my scratch suit got, like, destroyed. Yeah. It, it was torn up. And I, I was like, damn, you know, I work hard. These things are not cheap. Like, I wish there were sponsors out there for helpers, you know, because honestly, there's not mm -hmm. a lot of people willing to do that. Christine sent me a message. She's like, I see you working hard. I think you're a, the right kind of guy. Let me know if you think this is a good idea. I think we could work together. Man, she, she sent me that scratch suit, a sleeve, a bag. Like, she really supports helpers. There's another guy That's out awesome. there. That's awesome. Oh, you did uh, a video with the sleeve. Didn't you just yeah, do a video man. with the sleeve? Yeah, yeah, and I love it. I really do. Like, yeah. it's not easy for a helper to change sleeves. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I put that thing on, I closed my eyes, I presented it, and it was exactly That's a nice sleeve. Yeah, You're in the garage, right? Nice. It's a rad dog sleeve, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, whose dog was that in the video? Mine. That was your dog? Yeah, so, oh, good-looking so dog, she's man. she's an awesome yeah. dog. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Rough Dog Sports Inc., I cannot thank Christine enough because, I mean, she really supports – helpers mm -hmm. and that in That's turn nice. supports the sport it's awesome we need a lot of people that do that we'll throw that link up so, on the uh, yeah. on, on the facebook page as well absolutely and if they want to reach you how do they do that um so i got a just a normal facebook page uh it's mark helper payone because again i think a helper is a person who builds a dog although i love being a decoy i yeah. pride myself in in helping people build their dogs up for trial and for sure for the dog to beat me up so mark helper payone uh, and then I also have a, a, a business page, if you want to call it that, and it's just Mark Payone Dog Training. Um, I, I occasionally get clients, and I'll work their dogs for a couple of weeks, and I try to show what I'm doing with that. I hope that that kind of helps other people because I got a full-time job with the Marine Corps. It's not like I'm making big dollars on training. But sure. uh, eventually, you know, when I retire, I'd like to fully transition to dog training. It's a passion. It's, it's something that drives me. So you can reach me there as well. Uh, and, yeah, uh, I'd be happy to. You know, awesome. Talk and do some things. And Sean, my man, 
What What's you, up? Anything you want to plug? Anything going on that you want to talk about? I want to plug these guys, man. Yeah. You know, all of our other guests, Sam, Paul, everybody's coming on the show um, because it's it's just opening up, like you said. It's putting it out there for yeah. all the people that don't know, people that want to learn yeah. um, uh, because we need it. We need to push it. We need to push the Absolutely. information out there Absolutely. and get everybody excited about it um, because it is exciting stuff. And really thank exciting. you guys for making this platform, man. When I talked to you in January, I was like, yeah. so excited because I can hear like Gerard, Gerard Bradshaw and I could hear about Sam and, mm -hmm. and Paul Freeney who was mentioned by Cody who yep. I met years ago yep. Just yep. like small yeah world. man it's so tight yeah. you know um, big shout out to Paul he's an awesome dude but I want to thank you guys because honestly as oh, soon thanks, as this man. show started I was like every week I gotta awesome, listen man. I That's gotta cool. listen I appreciate awesome. that I'm and a fan I'm I appreciate I'm a, I'm that I'm an instant fan and you know it's going to make me get podcast. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you it so is, much, man. Well, we do this show, you know, really just to get the uh, the community together, yeah. you know, to yeah. educate the the uneducated. Absolutely. And uh, and us, you know, and sure. and to kind of just try to bring this 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 crazy crazy industry of of dog training together and anything dog related to be honest with you. Um so as far as me, um obviously thank you guys for coming on. Nah, thank um, you, today, uh, how long is that that seminar going on? By the way, Saturday and Sunday. Can Sunday I swing out Sunday and watch? You got Please. to, man. All right, man. I'm gonna uh, we'll we'll talk about that. Uh, Nick's gonna be back next week, so we're excited to have him on um, or back on. We're gonna have Jerry Bradshaw in studio. Uh, super excited about that one. That's the PSA. That's yeah, PSA yeah. founder. Yeah, so now and he, I'm tuning in. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, man. and he also owns uh, Tar Hill K9. Yep. So. And then uh, the following week, we have Dawn Rabinowitz, which is a uh, – she's a big deal, man. Yeah. She is one of the big-time photographers in the working mm. dog. And she uh, she she does working one. dogs. You know, she, she trains in it, too. So um, we're excited to have her on as well. And then we got a bunch of other guests lined up. So – we got a lot of uh, a lot of busy things going on here in the next few weeks. We appreciate everyone's support as always. If you wouldn't mind and you're still watching this, do me a favor, hit the share button. That's the best way you can support us right now. The best way you can support us tomorrow is to download the podcast. Head over to iTunes, Google Play. Tell that uh, dummy Alexa to play it. Tell uh, Google Home. Uh, yeah. Wherever they play podcasts, you can find us. I promise you. Um, we have been consistently in the top 25 since we started this program, and it's because of you guys out there. So I want to thank you personally. Um, we have peaked as high as number five. We were literally four spots behind the, wow. the man, Joe Rogan himself. Crazy. So, um, so thank you so much. Um, thank you to our sponsors once again. Uh, look forward to having uh, Nick back with us next week because I am not doing this shit anymore, <laughs> ever again. Back so Sean, Sean's going back to the closet. <laughs> to the closet. <laughs> we'll see you guys next yeah, week. The Dog Show. You ready? Uh, the Dog Show with Nick That's and Joe. Awesome. It's a beast. It's, a beast. it's going down. It's off the chain. It's off the leash. Off the leash. I'm tuning in Friday every week. The Dog Show podcast. Yes, indeed. Yes, Got the podcast, listen to it online, giving you advice to help train your canine, take your dog to the next level from the experts of obedience, the dog show, dog show, guaranteed you're needing this, ayy, off the leash, canine training, Facebook and IG, and the site is so amazing, yeah, the dog show with Nick and Joe, hold up, the dog show with Nick and Joe, I got one more, yeah, Nick and Joe. You got a new one? You ready? <laughs> oh, I saved it for you guys. Man. This is the dog show with Nick and Joe. Off the chain, it's off the leash. <laughs> giving some tips and giving advice to help you train. This is awesome. Yeah, it's the podcast. Don't <laughs> oh, delay. I mean, don't delay. It's on 2 p.m. every Friday. Oh, Time man. I'm just going to start right listening for this. Yeah. <laughs> this hit right here. To the next level. I want to, hey, best at it. I got an idea. You need a freaking soundtrack and yeah. entertaining. on iTunes. So motivated, right. real Give dude. Right. Who's this guy? Needed. Make a wild, wild dog turn super chill and obedient. Nick and Joe, I need to hear that for the deal. For real, yeah. Download it fast. The dog show podcast. When it comes to canines, this is what you want. Hit the dog show podcast.com. Right. The dog show podcast with Nick and Joe. Let's go.
Let's go. Kind of feel big time, yeah. right? Dude, dude. <laughs> that is just we're not, right we're not but guy, we feel like it. All right, see you guys next it. week. That thing crank. That is sick, man. You guys got to.